Hailing frequencies are open. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Shield Tomorrow, the Star Trek RPG show here on GNS Live. What did you say before we went live? Something sexy, Zazarit? You don't know what I'm talking about. All right, yeah. Saw that coming. All right, cool. No, she said something that made me laugh. All right, hi, everybody. Uh, Okay, so uh, welcome back, and uh, let's get into our announcements. Um, I'm a little off my game today, <laughs> as I have not had any coffee in the past uh, 48 hours, and my body Who is. Who are like, you? I know my body is. Who like, oh, are What you? the hell are you doing to us? Uh, no. We support right. you. We yeah. love Thank you. We're, we're here yeah. to help you through. You know who started this is Tal. Talison's laying off the coffee, and so every time we go out to lunch, she orders decaf, and I'm like, oh man. So now I'm trying it, and just like he, I am suffering. I'll get over it. Um, okay, so uh, real quick to start things off today, um, I just wanted to start by saying thank you to everybody because we've been getting flooded with messages of how much y'all love S.H.I.E.L.D. because of our announcement last week. Yeah. It's been in a very emotional week for us. Um, I've been getting a lot of great artwork and a lot of incredible messages. We got video messages oh, on yeah. YouTube. We got yeah. all these other we're getting. Yeah. Um, we still have some fan mail that's that's come in that we're going to start. We're going to open, um, probably do it. Uh, I might do it next week. We might might hold off. It'll we depend be because here. that's right. That's we. Why don't we hold off? We'll do the the next fan opening on the uh, not this next episode, but the one after. I won't be here. Um. Yeah. Oh, you're not gonna be here in the one after either. Yeah, because of Vegas. Oh, that's right. You're going I'll to be that at one. amazing Vegas Comic Con for all of you in Vegas. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, I know. Um. So uh, that's that. We'll do that. But the uh, lower decks episode is going to be next week. <laughs> Um, and as a quick reminder, next week is going to be the episode where all of the guest stars who have been on the USS Sally ride are getting their very own Below Decks episode run by somebody on this crew. Do I have permission to announce who it is? Uh, that is, that is a no. Yeah. I did not hear a yes. Exactly. I did not hear yes, so I'm going to move on. I don't know. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so you, you just have hear. to stay tuned hear. to find out who it is, um, uh, and we will we will let you guys know. But I do want to send also real quick uh, two more things. Um, Gen Con, uh, a lot of y'all have been asking about when our meetup is going to be. I'm still waiting for that information. Um, from what I understand, they're trying to find us a venue to actually have this meetup at. So they're actually going to do a thing, and I know that we're trying to get it so it doesn't interfere with the Ox Crew meetup that you guys had started planning. So uh, and the I will alpha get alpha party. Yeah. Oh yeah, and there's going to be an alpha party, and that'll be pretty rad. Um, so all that information is going to be available on the site, and. Um, we will. Uh, one of my favorite gifts of Amy. I'm not kidding. I it see. Is, it I, I watch it all I, the time. I just. I. I forgot all my beautiful new antenna, and Amy. I'm so sorry. It's not because I don't love them. I love them very much. It's because I love them so much. They're in a separate bag, and I don't. I Everyone is judging you right now, Amy. When you do this thing, the Everyone. same way, Eric, every lay off my dog. I would, I would stand here the whole time, including yourself. So That's sorry. yeah. I could do get blue today. Lipstick the and, part and of antenna will be played by Bonnie twitch. Gordon. <laughs> They're antenna. better now. <laughs> antenna one and antenna two. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, so, Gina. And I okay, sorry. That hands. was back on topic. We will uh, we will get you guys uh, all the information about our Gen Con stuff coming up. Um, but I can now confirm that Gina will be there. Yay! Yay! We've got a Gina. Everything's We've got a Gina. Gina. So right now the count is it's going to be Gina, um, me. It'll be Amy Dallin. It'll be Sam Lev. It will be Bonnie Gordon, and Xander will also mm -hmm. be there. The other half of the Library Bards. Um, Elisa's going to be swanking it up in Las Vegas at representing Sally Ride at the Star Trek convention. And Hector is like a ninja. He just kind of throws down a smoke pellet and appears sometimes. Like, undecided. <laughs> undecided, I guess. Undecided. I don't, I don't know. So hopefully Hector will be there. If not, Xander, then we'll just. Or, yeah. I was going to say. Um, Hector's going to be in Seattle for some reason. We don't know why. <laughs> Can we make Seattle. our own like cross event hashtag and just Ooh. send each other pictures of cool stuff? Ooh. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a like, great idea. Sally ride across the U.S. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Sally ride across the con. Uh, <laughs> Oh, um, we'll, we'll so, <laughs> um, also, uh, a quick shout out to DJ Phoenix, Ken Coleman. Mm. Oh, yeah. He's in the hospital watching us right now. Oh, hey, buddy. Yeah. Oh, I love DJ Phoenix. We hope, we hope that gets fixed up quick. And thank you for going to Sick Bay. Yeah, yeah. Th thank yes. you. Ken, thank you for going to Sick Bay. We really appreciate that. Your doctor approves. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, we wishing you, uh, our, our friends on the Below Decks podcast, we wishing T uh, DJ uh Ken Coleman to get. I always leave out a letter. He's got. It's DJ something Phoenix, isn't it? Mm. DJ S. DJ Phoenix. Phoenix. P H E O N Y X. See, I was. Yeah, and all right. Sorry. So Ken, get better. Wikipedia damn it. Sam. Why? It's an order. <laughs> Wiki Sam. Um, mm. Okay. Um, and lastly, uh, I've got something I'd like to read. Um, I wrote this up this afternoon and got the thumbs up that I could say this, so I'm going to say it. So if you'll bear with me for a second. 
Uh, this is in regards to some of the stuff that a lot of you guys have been privy to that's been happening on the internet today, specifically with our sister company, Nerdist, and the people that used to be associated with Nerdist. Um, so this is what I got for you. First, I want to say that Geek and Sundry and Nerdist owe what we are today to the people who are here now, today. We've changed shape, we've evolved, we've changed hands, and each time change has happened, what comes next has been the responsibility of the creative, inclusive, supportive, and wonderful people who are taking the task of writing the next chapter of these companies. Um, GNS and Nerdist are who we are today because of the people, the men and women, and the MBs who enter this building each day and work so that they can continue to make this a safe haven for a community of fans who come together to celebrate not just the things they love, but each other. And that's who the fuck we will continue to be. The fuck wasn't in there, but I'm angry. Yes. And lastly, we yeah. believe women end of line. Gore, I'm right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, now that that is out of the way, does anybody have any other announcements before we jump into tonight's game? I think there is a, yes, Sam, yes. Would you, would you like to uh, make an announcement? I will be GMing the Lower Decks episode. Yay! 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 Cool. So. And I'm excited! Yes, Yay! Next Wait, Friday. I thought it was me! No. Nope. It's not me! Sam DeLev no. stepping into the GM's chair. Going center chair. Center chair. Take it. Center chair. Mm. <laughs> so. And it's so funny. So many people were like, it's not going to be Sam. Sam said they didn't want to run a game. And then uh -huh. bam! Didn't yeah, see that coming, did you? I was going to bring that up. Bam. My job. On the break, I was going to bring that up. Always. Always. I'm a never GM. I rely yeah. on these delightful uh, people to enable the me. The second you said that, that, I knew that was not yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's impossible. So, <laughs> yep. Next, next, next Friday will be the Lower Decks episode run by Sam DeLev, and I will be playing Matazi, and we will have everybody back doing their guest roles. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, but for now, I think, I think it's fair to say it's time to jump into tonight's episode of Shield of Tomorrow. back. Um, we were just uh, picking up the pieces because I destroyed the entire universe. So it's going to be a short game tonight. Um, uh, actually, before we jump into the uh, <laughs> before we jump into the game tonight, um, I just wanted to give everyone a, a quick. Uh, I, there was one announcement that I forgot. Jason Charles Miller, his new album Woo! released. Yay! Our own Kadok has his own has has released his next album. Um, and he's actually texting me right now because <laughs> he was like, he mentioned it, and I was like, well, uh, remind me the album name because I'm a great friend. I'm a wonderful <laughs> friend. So uh, uh, he's telling me no. Okay, well, the album's called No, and I don't think that's the album name. Um, but uh, yeah, so Jason Charles Miller's new album is out, and I'm pretty sure you can go uh, get, get that. I'm just going to let him text. Just go uh, look at his Twitter. Just, just go, go look at his yeah. Twitter. Yeah. JCM, JCM knows how to hawk this thing. I was yeah. doing it. I'm pretty, <laughs> sure, I'm pretty sure he advertised it. It's not his first yeah, rodeo. You know. JCM knows what he's doing. <laughs> it's called In the Wasteland. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which, is yeah. A, yeah. which is, that is totally a JCM title name. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's like on his business card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, Okay, so then let's go ahead and get into tonight's. Uh, 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 <laughs> let's go ahead and get into tonight's episode. So uh, the quick recap is he's just he tweeting me all the info now, and I'm like, no, no, Jason, I can't now. It's happening. Um, tomorrow time. Yeah, I'm at work. Uh, <laughs> I'm at work. New phone. Who did? Um, so uh, he so me like that the other day after he had seen Coco. 
He was like, Hector, I finally saw Coco, man. And I'm like, great, I'm at work. And he's like, Thanks, I'm an Alpha Comic Book Club right now, yeah, Jason. Yeah. Can we do this later? The best. <laughs> I love that guy. Because every time he has the impulse to share something he's yeah. super happy about, it does, it doesn't, it'll be three in the morning. Dude, dude, did you see the first episode of Lost in Space? Mm-hmm. It was okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, Granted, I did that to you the thanks, other day. Jason. I was like, you're literally on your way to set, but talk about Carol Danvers because I just saw that's your topic this week. <laughs> so sometimes you tolerate it. I love this family. Um, okay, so uh, recap of last week's episode because last week went places y'all didn't expect. Um, you managed to actually track down, or I should say, you found the trail you were looking for, the nebula that was shaped like a bird for evidence of the direction that you needed to head as you were on the trail of the pole right now. Um, Finding the nebula was pretty auspicious considering the recent visions that's been had and the other bird-like imagery that has surfaced with regards to the pole. Um, Arriving at the nebula, you found evidence that a battle had taken place there just a few weeks earlier and that a gravitational event of an epic proportions had taken place that actually reshaped the nebula. It used to be called the Bruised Star Nebula or some such. Um, I think it was the Bruiser Nebula. Um, I could look at my notes, but I'm just going to go. Um, so the the nebula itself had actually gravimetrically had been had been altered. These gravitational forces had literally pulled some of the gases. This nebula was light years in radius, and it was pulled in certain areas um, in just the past few weeks, giving it the shape of a bird. Um, doing some further investigations, actually going into the nebula, which played havoc with the Sally Ride's shields, you actually discovered um, evidence that uh, ships had been here and that there was an ion trail, a very faint ion trail, thanks to some pretty great detective work from both the Sally Ride sensors and her science team, as usual. Um, you guys managed to find, follow the ion trail to a station that does not appear on any charts. Um, it is called Kalvania Station. And from the sight of it, when you come out of warp, the Sally Ride was, it didn't take a lot of investigative work to discover that this place was clearly some kind of pirate's haven. Mm -hmm. Or if not a pirate haven, a den of thieves, so to speak. A lot of transports coming and going. None of them were Federation. None of them were really related to any particular government. Um, Lots of civilian craft coming and going and all of them giving Sally a wide berth as you came into dock. as you docked, you came into contact with an old face, Valu, the one of the right-hand people of uh, the pirate formerly known as Zazret, now known as uh, the Broken One at the station, um, for reasons that kind of became obvious when you encountered him in his throne room. Um, Zazret has undergone a bit of a change. He looks like he has seen some shit. He's got a nice scar and eye patch, plates on his head and on his chest. He is bearing an air of authority, and apparently now he is sanctioned by the Orion Union. So he's no longer kind of adrift. He looks like he's curried the favor of the Empress and has since become public enemy number one to the Orion Crime Syndicate. Um, You arrive just in time to watch a brutal execution of a slaver. And then a long conversation taking place about what you guys can do to work together. And some pretty big revelations got dropped. Apparently, Malgog has something to do with the pull. There's evidence to suggest that Malgog has been involved with or has been around the initiation of some of the gravimetric events that have taken place. Now, how that connects you and the Sally Ride to what Malgog is doing is still unknown. How it is that you guys are encountering these gravimetric shifts when you're in an asteroid field in Klingon space, and he's God knows where, is yet to be understood. Um, That piece of evidence, though, does seem to coincide with a lot of other hints that's kind of interesting. Namely, the vision that you received from the Orb of Journeys, which straight up told you that Captain Martinez is a part of the pole somehow. The first emissary, who apparently is an ancestor of Lark and Talon, revealed this. Mm. Talon, of course, while all this was going on, was going through, as we like to say, a decompression. Um, The way we set it up in last episode is that Talon, after being fit to leave sickbay, uh, immediately entered the holodeck for meditation on Mount Selenia oh, and cool. has been undergoing Vulcan 
uh, centering ceremonies and meditations, um, which have proven to be very useful. Um, again, it's always the ritual and sitting in this, even though it is a holodeck simulation, sitting on the mountain again, it, it, it is, it is not difficult for you to find your center again, Talon. Um, we'll start tonight's game with Talon actually leaving her quarters, uh, coming back on duty. Um, what you know, Talon, is this, that you found the station where the ship had escaped to that left this battle scene. You do know, because word has spread throughout the ship, that Zazred apparently has declared himself what he calls a Thuldoshi, mm. which is his Orion word for a privateer or a king privateer. He is sort of a sanctioned... Uh, authority within the Orion Union. So now you're dealing with the Orion government when you talk to Zazarit. Um, you've also learned that on Kalvania Station, there is a... <laughs> like a Game of Thrones microcosm taking place. There are two sides, apparently. There's a side that is loyal to uh, Zazarit and what he is trying to build. And then apparently, Valu his Vulcan counterpart, or his, his right-hand person, is getting a lot of her own favor curried amongst the thieves in the den. Mm -hmm. And apparently, it seems like both sides are eventually going to have a clash at some point. But right now, they're in that tricky maneuvering phase where everyone's trying to figure out how strong the other one is. And so they're treating each other like everything's fine. It kind of harkens back to a very darker, less lawful version of what you guys encountered on Narendra Station some time ago. Mm -hmm. um, there's something oddly refreshing about this, though. These people are rather upfront about it and aren't hiding behind their insignias or ranks. Everyone's kind of... The, the only thing that's worse is, is the lines that are getting drawn. It's kind of difficult to decide who's friend or foe. The one person that Zazrit does seem to trust implicitly, however, is Koss. His ever loyal uh, enforcer, his Gorn sideman, he is constantly stepping into Zazrit's place when Zazrit is not around, and Zazrit seems to entrust. There seems to be a bit of a Han Solo uh, Chewbacca thing going on with those two. Mm -hmm. um, you get a Chewbacca air from Zazrit? <laughs> 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 um, mm. So, uh, so we start tonight's game uh, in the midst of that atmosphere. Currently, uh, Captain Martinez has recalled the crew of the Sally Ride back. The senior staff has returned to the, to the Sally Ride to discuss the next moves and what you guys are going to do. Right Meeting now, time. yeah, the, right now, it's your super right power. now, the the, the objective is is that Zazrit has put you on that Valu is probably your best bet at tracking down Malgog, mm. but Zazrit himself, his resources are completely tapped. The pull destroyed much of his capable ships that are that could confront Malgog, and right now he just doesn't have the capacity to chase him down. Did he say he could provide some ships? Didn't he say that? Like that some he might be able to provide some fighter support. Some fighter support, but he it's also, short range. It doesn't have. It's short range, and he, he can give you costs. costs. He said he would give you costs That's if you it. wanted costs. That's it. Yeah, um, but we're leaving. Yeah, if you guys, pretty much the only people that can track him down right now, you guys are the only one capable to like mm -hmm. find him. But here's the thing, you don't even really know where to go. Mm -hmm. And Malgog has hinted that Valu might know. He has suspicions. Zazrit. Mal Zazrit, Zazrit. Zazrit, sorry. Zazrit has suspicions that Valu yes. knows how to find Malgog. And so he's been trying to help you all devise a strategy on how to convince her. And he has warned you emphatically that she is fucking evil. What's the strategy, and, Eric? Uh, yes, and then of course, uh, yes. Uh, no one can forget the uh, the, the uh, not makeout the session that happened last game, where uh, Martinez punched Zazrit in the face, and Zazrit seemed to be pleased about that, <laughs> and didn't punch didn't punch Martinez back. There was a bro moment. <laughs> I call it the predator moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, that's right. We went like this after. Yeah, yes. you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, so <laughs> we can ostensibly, if we want to contact Blue, look like. We are on the outs with Zazrit. Mm -hmm. So they staged yeah. they staged what looked oh, like an argument. It. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't just like a little love tap. Mm -hmm. no. that as well. No, Zazrit got bloody. Not just. Uh, yeah. Zazrit got Definitely bloodied and sucker punched. <laughs> yeah. There was true. some subtext to that punch. <laughs> you would know. I yeah, the you were in the confirms. room. Oh, I, I can I can I can prove it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a love tap. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and so we begin tonight's episode. Um, Talon, stepping out of your quarters, um, hearing that the uh, senior staff has returned to the ship and are assembling in the uh, the main uh, meeting room. And uh, a few moments later, after stepping off the turbo lift onto the bridge, you are, uh, arrive just in time to see them congregating. And you guys actually watch as the turbo lift doors open and stepping out as collected as ever is Lieutenant Commander Talon. Did I hear about the meeting? Did uh-huh. oh, yeah, okay. so you would have gotten the call. Okay. Just want to put it out there that um, Captain Martinez will have ordered the uh, ensign who's sitting in for Lieutenant Sage to plot on a course for Narendra. We're heading back there right now. Really? Yes. Okay. And on our way back, <clears throat> we're having the senior staff meeting to discuss what happened, catch everybody up, and figure everything out. But we're we're gone. Okay. Um, um, Captain, before that, uh, we have an important call to take. And uh, grab Sage's hand. We we got to take that call. The, there is a call. Do you remember the message? No, you two. No, no. <laughs> they 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 got it. They they. So well, your staff it was just didn't. announced as soon as we got no, out you had a, onto you, the ship. No, you were told that you had a message waiting for you, and when you went over to the side panel wall and opened it up, it was from Zadis who said, yeah. Mala, Lark, contact me as soon as you can. I have news. Yeah. Sorry, I thought What's, we were all privy to that. What's the call? Are you kidding me? We're on company time right now. Personal call. What are you talking about? What's happening? Is everything well, okay, we, Chief? What's going on? We personal... I don't, don't, I don't know what's happening. But you well, just, maybe maybe we should take it after the meeting. That way, if we get any information for him when we call him back, we for can who, Lieutenant? I don't think that's wise. I think we should listen to it now. Listen to what's happening. What's going on? I don't I know. But a lot of logs. stuff just happened, okay. and <laughs> things involving Zadis. And I think it's well, important if we uh, send a message. Let's use this as a role to build momentum. So go ahead and make a who uh, sent a message? Go ahead and make a roll. Who sent a message? Well, then by all means, yeah, listen to it. What is it? Are yeah. you sure it's a personal call, um, sir? I would say just make a reason, uh, uh, this would be a reason con roll. Great! Difficulty zero. I'm testing this. Yeah. <laughs> reason con is my dumpest of dumps. All right, so then this is how no. I'm gonna rule how you fail that roll. As you start, as you start entering in the information, you stop as you hear Mala and everybody basically tell you everything that you were about to look up and go, ah. <laughs> so you stop, you stop your search. Um, Thank you. So, Chief, uh, we need to speak to Zadis as soon as possible. And we're actually on our way to Narendra right now yeah. to talk to him. But if he sent you and the lieutenant a message, and if it's a personal message, by all means, please check it at your station right now. If there's something pressing, let us know. If there's something that we need to do to help with whatever is happening with Lynn, let us know. But go ahead and check that now, and if it's not the most pressing, mm-hmm. you know, convert it into a text message for a set, so just read it at your station, then if it's not the most pressing thing, bring whatever information you're willing to bring into the meeting that we're about to have. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Talon mm-hmm. is here, we're ready to have a meeting. Yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. Feeling, feeling better? Yes, I'm feeling very well, thank yes. you. Yes. Jiv comes Great. walking in just kind of out of breath, he goes, <sighs> sorry. <clears throat> I appreciate the hustle, Lieutenant Commander. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, did I miss anything? Have we already started? No. Not, not yet. And actually, just sit tight a second, Commander. Yeah, You're okay. A bit early. Yeah, we'll go right um, to a console. Consides. We're going to check a message, and then the rest of us are going to convene in the uh, conference room. So. We'll meet you there. Great. Okay. You all right? Yeah, yeah. I've been in the holodeck. It's good to have a young body again. What? <laughs> the thing that happened to me. You remember the thing that happened to me? We, we all remember that, right? That wasn't in yeah. my head? No, yes. it happened. What kind of program were you running? I was just jogging. I never jog anymore. Well, you, you look good. Thank you. In Tellarite, it would be better to tell me I look like complete crap, Captain. You look like complete crap. Mala's got Let's it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the two of you uh, move out of the room. <laughs> Your beard is sweaty. I don't like it. Well, I noticed, right? Gross. I don't think we actually know. Um, hmm? But we visually know. Only Rolona. We visually saw. I think Mala knows. I definitely. Oh, Plus yeah, you too. Wait, wait. What do y'all know? What are y'all talking about? We, we don't know about Jeff. Jeff? We don't know about Jeff. We don't know the thing. Why it happened, but I mean, he look, he's, 
he's Trump. like oh. yeah. visibly been doing things that we might have seen. Oh yeah, that are different. He 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 is a lot more vitality. He is mm-hmm. ever since the whole mm-hmm. incident happened with the hull breach, he has been functioning. Mm-hmm. A has lot. Of, he's got more pep in his okay. step. We don't has need to know the personal details. Our, All right, he's, we don't. he's got rippling muscles now. His beard is shining. No. He's. <laughs> <laughs> you kept up. Oh. I, I, yeah, I, we wouldn't know. I had why, intended but. to, but I wasn't sure if any or of our later, like everyone was in this vision kind of discussions may have included, like as we were listing our various ship miracles. Mm. Um, but anyway. it really hasn't come up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, on, on the list of crazy things that have happened to this crew. Yeah. Shockingly enough, Jib being miraculously regenerated into a better body, <laughs> remarkably, is not high on the list of incredible things that has happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we all know he got instantly healed. Yes, yeah. he sat up when he should have yeah. been going into uh, With surgery. No, any no visible, no medical damage. assistance, and he yeah. doesn't have any scars to and show you for know, the injury I either. Think everything because yeah. you busted into sick bay. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I was very upset about it. Yes, mm. you were very. That was a very unhappy day. Yeah. Um, but no, so I the think- two of you leave the conference room. You go over to the engineering station. <laughs> um, Running up the ramp to the back wall where you where one of the stations is, you activate the console and you see the message comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's text message only. Oh, okay. Um, and it just says, um, it says, Mala, Lark, I've got some amazing news. It's not much, but it's amazing news. First of all, Lark, I found the names of your parents. <gasps> it was in a registry, and apparently they managed to get off of World. <gasps> Um, their Sorry. names are Rozka Ranasi Wait. and Rozka Jodet. Oh, Wait, I, I gotta got, write down my mommy. I have extras. What was it? Rozka Ranasi. Rozka Ranasi. That's your mother? Rozka Ranasi. Uh huh. And Rozka Jodet. J O D E T. That's your father. J O D E T. Rozka Jodet. I broke my lid. Oh my gosh, my mommy and my daddy. I, just, I, I got so many. Okay. Okay. Um, oh. And then, <laughs> And then it says, uh, I start shaking. Mala, I'm tracking down the lead right now, but there was a huge transport of, of uh, Betazoids who got off colony when the Dominion invaded Betazoid space. And I found two flags that indicate that your parents were on one of the transports. Wow. Well, oh, okay. That's all it says. It says, I can tell you more. It's really vague right now, but things are looking up. I just hug my mom. Come here, give me a real hug. Okay. <laughs> sorry, Dr. Thurlow. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I hug zone. <laughs> it also says it also says we're not getting any updates, but as, since I'm senior staff on Narendra Station, I can also tell you, Mala, that apparently things are actually starting to turn against the Dominion on Beta Z. <sighs> you bet it is. Okay. I'm ready for this meeting. Me too. <laughs> let's go. Okay. I'm just like, I'm visibly shaking. Yeah, let's yeah. run. Yeah, okay. As this bomb is just running. casually dropped on the two of you, it's this text message sent out from Zadis from Narendra. Bust um, in. As you're walking back into the doors of the meeting, you see the, the main view screen of uh, Calvania Station beginning to disappear behind Sally as the mm-hmm. nacelles fold up as a course has been plotted to Narendra Station. I'm asking Ziv a bunch of questions about how he found his joint pressure during his jog, and, and he's probably <laughs> getting grubby. He's like, uh, Ziv is like, you know it's crazy? Slowly but surely, I'm not getting quite as nauseated with zero G anymore either. But then I start thinking, oh, is this gonna last? And then I start getting nauseated. Interesting effect. Your acclimatization rate has changed, but there's some psychological component, clearly. Mm. Yeah, I've I've got some stuff going on. I'm a Tellerite. We repress a lot of things when we're forced to be nice to people. (laughs) What you gotta be when you wear one of these. One of many coping strategies. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We live in close quarters where I'm from, so we understand the impulse to get along. Oh, we don't have that impulse per se. Well, let's just say that we get along in a different way, Doctor. One of the ways that we bond and connect is we tell each other what complete assholes we are. Yeah, we find a lot of shouting makes for a noisy cave, but... 
You don't have to shout though. You could just the door opens. This, all of y'all are just kind of listening to Throllo and Jim have this weird conversation. And then sh- here comes Mala and uh, Lark stepping back into the room. Shh. It was all good. Unrelated. Good personal really good, call. Really good. Really good. Really good call. Okay. Okay. Meeting. Let's do the meeting. What did we miss? Did we miss anything? I- is that us okay? Yes. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Uh, are you both okay? You said it was. Yeah, good great. News. Yeah, great. It's really all good, good news. Yeah, we can we can discuss it later. It's it's not important and not relevant to this. But I mean, it's important. It's really it's, important, yeah, it's really good. It's not relevant it's really to good this. news. Okay. We're still holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Great. Um, okay. My instinct told me that uh, the sooner we left that station, the sooner we could keep tabs on our friend Valu. And I have a feeling that if she is going to make moves to try to go warn Malgog or to come in contact with him, that she is going to do it sooner rather than later. Essentially, we have the shortest possible window to try to track this guy down. And I want to head to Narendra to ensure that Lind is safe and to potentially gain from him any intel that we can that he's willing to give in terms of Malgog ship and schematics and things that we need. So the plan, Lieutenant Commander, after uh, discussing it with our friend Zazrit, is to, um, again, make it seem as though we've had a falling out with Zazrit and wait for Valu to potentially reach out to us, maybe give it 24 hours before we reach out to her. Either one of those possibilities might happen and she may make moves and try to warn Malgog before either of that happens. <clears throat> um, that's what we're looking at right now. So we need to formulate a strategy and figure out how we're going to track this guy down. Sir? Yes. If we think that Valu is going to try to contact Malgog, we should bug the nearest subspace relay. My thoughts exactly. That's right, Commander. We we're going to need people who can infiltrate computers with great skill on this ship. Great skill. I'm thinking, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> you just stare at the ground, Lieutenant. Yep. I'm thinking there's a specific person you can work with on that particular assignment. I Commander. think I can very particularly work with. Insane. You guys aren't talking about me, are you? Fantastic. No, no, we're not, Commander. Just we're not talking about you at all. No, no, no not talking Absolutely about you at not. all. Definitely, Lieutenant. Sage. So, on top of doing that, <laughs> I worry that uh, Zazarit's communications might also be um, bugged or be observed. But we need to find a way to communicate with Zazarit on a confidential level. Let's secure the line. Yeah, we could, we could we get could, a secure line. Yeah, we can, well, can do that. something like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those things need to happen so that we open a line of communication to Zazarit and start essentially spying on the line of communication that Valu is engaging in. Right? Aye, sir. That's good. What else? Operation operator in effect? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's Operation. good. Operation yeah. operator. <laughs> okay. Well, sir, there was one thing that occurred to me in which Zadis could be help. When we rescued him, we learned that he was on Malgog's ship at or near Citrian 7, which is where we first experienced the pull. That's true. It would be very useful to know whether or not Malgog activated that, whether he had whatever he's using then. How could we find that out? Talking to Zadis, he was on the ship. Okay. Okay, that's good. Uh, we also need to figure out how to track down Malgog. And it might come down to tracking down the effects of the pull. Because if he is behind this, then he might be leaving a breadcrumb trail, whether or not he knows it. Yeah. So. We might have a science officer who could do something about that with extensive research on gravimetric disturbances. Mm-hmm. With some help from Lieutenant Baker as well. Captain, I could consult with Lieutenant Baker and we could run some studies on whether there have been any time intervals where we could yes. possibly predict when the next gravimetric phenomenon would happen, okay. when and where. All right, so to go over everything we just said in summation, the plan is to go speak with Zadis in person, ensure that he's safe, potentially inform him that he might be in danger Baloo does know that Zadis lives. Baloo doesn't know where Zadis is. The further we keep Zadis away from Baloo, the better. So we might have to tell Lin Zadis to leave Narendra Station or do whatever he needs to do to hide 
Oh, aren't we just leading her right to him then? Question. Um. <clears throat> uh, do do we tell Admiral Hebert about what's going on? If, if we need to use status, then we're gonna have to ask him to leave his post at Narendra. I'm hoping he doesn't have to leave his post. Okay. I'm hoping he can stay at his post. If he is safe and secure there, okay. then he's safe and secure there. I'm hoping I that you now. we don't have to borrow him, but we rather just need his intel, his information, uh, anything he's willing to share. Sir, if, we, if we're possibly leading Valu to an Arranger Station, um, should we maybe send out some decoy messages to a, a, a station or a, a place that doesn't exist where he's not at? How likely need- is it that the Sally Ride can have its communications hacked right now. Not from very from from a, the hunk of junk station that we just left from. How likely is it? Is it a possibility? Yes. Okay. Sir, it's a question of skill, not just equipment. And okay. the Sally Rod has, on multiple demons- occasions, demonstrated cyber insecurity. Because of that very reason, I hesitated in just calling Zadis from here. I would rather speak to him in person. Right. In a relatively secure location. And may I suggest having uh, Dr. Throllo or Counselor Tristan, uh, w- when you speak to him, just get kissed. Present? Yeah. It's a good Talking idea. Talking to that. him of about course. that might cause a of little bit of stress. And so yeah. it seems then that the thing that should shoot to the top of the priority list is uh, potentially sending out some decoy messages now and making sure that we're not being hacked and that nobody is observing our communications as we're on our way to Narendra, which by all accounts should be a regular thing that the Sally Ride does all of the time. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if we need to stash Zadis away, the Dauntless is available and could- Yes, it is. To put it mildly, sir, blow the shit out of anything that came at them. Good, good, exactly. I believe both myself and Chief Mullerin have been in contact with Zadis, so if our, I guess, uh, communications have already been hacked or patrolled, they might have already had access to that, but if we send out decoy ones, we can make it seem as if we're still communicating with them, with them regularly, but yeah. send, just send it to a different place, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, so, so glad is, you're on vacation. The and, plan is for the decoy to include information about Lynn Zadis. His whereabouts. But that seems like incorrect. giving them more information than they may already have. I am also a little bit they, worried about that, yeah. It is possible that they that they do not know that he is still alive. Well, well I know he's still definitely alive. know he's alive. Well, I'd rather risk not drawing any more attention to communicating with Zadis right now. Okay. Uh, maybe we can find other strategies for decoy messages to throw whoever oh, might see. be following us off of our trail. Does that make sense? Say that again? So instead of Zadis being the subject matter, yeah. let's try to come up with some other ideas okay. to use in content for a message to throw somebody off of our trail if somebody is following us or tracking our whereabouts. We do have the probes that we sent out not too long ago. We could send out a decoy message saying we're following one of the probes on a science and maybe mission. Maybe we can make one of those probes say something about Malgog's whereabouts. End of the day, the most secure way to send a message would be to rely on information that whoever might hack us doesn't have available. The two of you know him very well. Mm -hmm. Speak in code that you all would understand. Communicate. Baloo doesn't know Zadis. You two do. Okay. (laughs) He's pretty smart. Reaches for the paper and pencils. Mm start writing. But I'll need Sage on that uh, <laughs> relay before we pass it. Right. Okay. All right, so that's the plan. Any more questions? Any other thoughts? Let's do this. Doctor? I'm glad we're trying our best to keep Zadis safe. I don't think that there's anything suspicious about going back to the station. Good, good. Uh, I don't know how we're going to find Malgog. But uh, I have a few choice words for him when we get there. Great, I'll make sure you get to say those words, Doc. All right. From a uh, safe distance, maybe. Everybody but Chief and the Lieutenant are dismissed from the meeting. If you guys oh. could just hang back for a sec. The ship stands up, heads out. Everybody else really, heads you out. look good, Shiv, whatever you're doing, keep it up. Go take a shower. Oh yeah, all it took was a hole breach and nearly dying, Captain. Uh, don't do that again, but you know. All right. He okay. rounds the corner. So all I needed was a hull breach, too? <laughs> You're like, 
It's a great drink, by the way. Whole breach. Whole breach. Great drink. <laughs> you guys are going to get to have whole breaches. We're not going to get to have them. So jealous. <laughs> um, okay, so senior staff filters out of the room. Yeah. I'm going to the lab. Okay. It's the research lab. Where you will always find <laughs> Lieutenant Dorothy Baker doing mm -hmm. her thing. Um, so as you're heading down there, you two find yourselves alone yeah. with Captain Martinez. Okay, Chief Lieutenant. Yeah. What was the message about? Our families. <laughs> you go first. He might have found out my parents' name, my real parents. So that's a big crumb in the bread. <laughs> yeah, that's not all. That's not all. They got off world, they right? They got off world. Uh. So they might still be alive again. <laughs> alive. So, yeah. I guess when all this is over, I'm, I. I guess I'm finally gonna get to meet my real parents. Maybe if I can find them. I mean, they seem to be pretty good at the whole hiding thing. But I mean, I know my real name. I know their real name. It it all matches. What are their names? I'll tell you. <laughs> Let me see. Tell me if I pronounce it wrong. Raska Rena R Renoski. Renasi. R E N A S I. I was way off. What was it? R E N A S I. Whoa. Renasi. R E N A S I. I was way off. I made them Russian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Roska Renassi and Roska jo Jodet. That's great. Great. That's just fantastic news. This is great. And yeah. tell him yours. Tell oh, him yours. Um, he may. He believes he found a shuttle with um, my parents' names on them before they were occupied, sir. They got off world. I believe so. Okay. And it also seems that the Dominion aren't doing too well on Beta Zoid anyway. So. Yeah, we're fighting back pretty good, Captain. Good. This is good. Yeah. This is good. I'm really happy for you I both. Imagine, good. I imagine Jim Hadar soldiers must have trouble sneaking up invisibly on people who can sense you're there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. <laughs> Unless there's something I don't know about with telepathy and the Jim Hadar, but I don't think there is. I think mm. I think Betazoids can absolutely. I don't believe so. I, I've walks never out. met one. Mm. No. Yes. I mean, now if the Ferengi tried attacking, they might have a better shot. Yeah. Yeah. Amala. Yeah. Lark. I wish we could go and find your people right now. I wish we could abandon what we're doing and go ensure that they're okay. But we have a job to do. Mm -hmm. And if we don't go take care of this, a lot of people could die. We understand, Captain. And to us, Zadis is family too, so. Thank you. Priorities. Yes. So as let's. As far as we know, they're safe right now. And good. Let's go save a bunch of lives. Okay. Let's go get this fucker. And then we can go find your families. Aye, Captain. Okay, Freeze frame. Okay, great. <laughs> great. That was out of character. Okay. <laughs> Lark did not just do that in the meeting. All right, we all have jobs to do. Dismissed. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. All right, I should probably, so. Oh, oh what are you going to oh, okay. I should probably go check uh, with Commander Rue uh, about getting that safe channel. And if you want to start working on a code, we can. Sure, sure. Um, do you mind if I just tag along and, and, and sit by you guys while I write? Yeah. Cool, I can bounce ideas off of you. Okay, great. Cool, let's go. Okay. Um, <laughs> so excited. So, sort of an arbitrary thing, but it's going to be about two days to Narendra Station from where y'all are at in the Shackleton Perfect Expanse. Um, uh, as that's happening, specifically as you're on your way to Narendra, what you guys are setting up your message to send to Zadis? Help. Yes. Uh, first thing I think is to get the relay just because it's a proximity thing, like getting the yeah. nearest cell tower to the station, basically. Yeah. Right. So we need to do that before we're out of range okay. of it. Right. It's not, uh, there, there are not very many sh rel subspace relays in the Shackleton yet. I mean, it's a lot of the problems they've been having with those gravimetric anomalies that are out here in, this, in the expanse has made it very difficult to find a safe place to set up these these relays. However, being a Federation starship, you have a full map of every location of every relay. So it is a small detour to come out of warp and adjust your course to come alongside one of these relays in deep space. Um, Shall we? The relay is basically a large satellite looking object, a cylinder floating out in space with multiple panels on it. It's actually relaying thousands and thousands of messages per millisecond. And as you guys pull up next to it, um, relays automatically have securities, uh, are automatically built in. Um, and as you're pulling alongside, you see messages popping up on the computer for identification codes, which you supply, being a Federation starship and this being a Federation relay. Um, the codes are authenticated and accepted, and you guys can link up directly to the relay now if you choose, so choose. Yep. 
All right, Commander. It also is worth noting, just so y'all know, that one of the security, um, one of the security uh, uh, countermeasures that's attached to these relays is they, they, for the lack of a better way of describing it, they essentially have security cameras on them. So they're actually beaming the information of a ship approaching them back to Narendra Station right now, which is on a high encryption level. Yep. So, uh, so it's just worth noting that Narendra can see you guys as y'all are pulling up alongside. So, Hi, Kolar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can they see me? Um, oh. <laughs> all right. So you guys come within about 100 kilometers and come to a, a dead stop, and you see the, out, the uplink is established. I pull the doctor aside very quickly. Would you mind if I just, if you worked nearby? I don't know if, um, I know the last time I was going through intelligence reports or attempting to do such tasks, I had a hard time with it. Yeah, I definitely need to go through all of these notes on my pad and I will feel much better about it if I do it right there. It does seem like a very comfy seat. I'll need you to move over slightly though because that part looks more comfortable. I suppose I can oblige. I just kind of watch and go, okay. Um, Sage? Yes, sir? You ready? <sighs> yep, let's get to hacking. All right. And let's see if we can do it without uh, any traces. <laughs> they might be better at finding them than I am. Yes, sir. All right, so Sally comes within about 20 kilometers now of the relay. And as you guys come to a stop, you are going to make a check. So you're going to try to encrypt a. Me you're basically going to try to create an encryption code to send through the relay. Is that correct? Um, I want to bug it so that we can get. Mm -hmm. Basically, I want to see if yeah. Valu calls Malgog. Mm -hmm. I want to try to trace the receiving okay. as a way to get position. Okay. If she calls him, we know where he is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. Um, It's a Federation relay, yep. but it is being used by the people in the Shackleton Expanse. The difficulty will just make it not look like this has happened. Um, yeah, essentially. Yeah. So, Lark, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that's gonna be a control computer, uh, control con, mm -hmm. rather. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, your your specialization will apply. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to set the difficulty at three. Okay. And I'm assuming Ruth's assisting as well. Yes. Um, the Sally Ride can also assist. Woo! And I'm going to grab one of these. Yep. Sally Ride. Yeah, please yeah. goose this. Let's start level at least. This is okay. going to be a yeah. great thing not to. So you're Sally, essentially what's a Sally? two. Oh, so Sally? Uh, is this Sally computer should be science? Yes. Or? Cool. I would okay. say, and Sally's. Mm, or security. No, so it wouldn't be security. I think it would be security. <laughs> we're good. I think it would, I actually I think it would be computers. Totally I think it'd be cute computers con <laughs> to be honest with you. Computers con? Yeah. Okay. And I'm rolling control security for the encryption Sweet. protocols. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll buy that. We're so, good? We're so good. <laughs> we're so good. <gasps> we're so good. Yeah. We're so good. What's going what on? What do you do? Are you I taking got, a picture? I got, <laughs> I got five successes. Did you roll a one? Yeah, you're you also rolled I one, and you deserve one. to be celebrated. I feel bad for. Just keep this in okay. mind because because in the, in the months to come, when we change the cipher system, the, we're all you, screwed. This is, <laughs> it's okay, Eric. I have the dice uh, for it. That's true. That's true. You've got <laughs> yep. those dice set aside. Yep. So all that's right. a total of. Eight. I had, I had two crits and an additional success, so <laughs> five. So five, six, seven, eight. Eight, Woo. eight successes. Wow. So nice so first roll of the day. Shuffle well done. Take a picture of yours, but it's literally your character. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> that's impressive. Y'all are maxed out now on. And uh, one bonus? We have a Do bonus we have any bonus? Yeah. Yes. Oh, one bonus. All right. Wait, I'm are we going to use that bonus. bonus one to where whenever so, all of this. I have a note. Um, over the next happy few face uh, over the next yeah, few minutes. I was going to say, like, whenever, like. <laughs> oh, I was gonna literally. I was literally going to say, whenever, like, all of this is done and we, like, take down Baru or whatever, then they, like, they find it out, a little happy face pops up yes. on the console. Uh, 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 you didn't yeah. say the magic <laughs> word. All right, so <laughs> essentially you spend the next few minutes creating from scratch a code that will replicate messages that are coming through mm -hmm. and send them to the Sally Ride. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, instead of redirecting a single message, it's like 
it's like a fast acting note taker that basically duplicates the message that's being relayed into it and sends it straight back to the Sally ride using uh, flagged code words. Mm-hmm. Um, it really is subtle. Now. It is, it is, Rue, you're getting an idea. Rue, let's just put it this way. You just got a really good snapshot of how it's possible that a young ensign could hack the personnel files of Starfleet Command and insert themselves as chief helmswoman of a brand new Intrepid class starship. Oh no, what did they do? <laughs> because the artistry that went into the work that was just people, done Sage. before your very eyes, oh. Sage <laughs> dances around that code and inputs that <laughs> command with a practice ease that would impress Starfleet intelligence. I'd love to use that bonus to uh, wipe the change log as well. Just okay. N- there's no, no no trace. Okay. All right. So now we have surveillance on this pirate station. Correct. You have. I would say you have one time? relay Good. in a very. Love I would say this power. relay. Tell you what, if you spend two momentum, I'll let you change some of the narrative up here. And we'll say that this relay was one of the strategically important relays of the Shackleton Expanse for mm-hmm. communications mm-hmm. in the in the sector of which this station is located. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we'll spend two momentum for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yes, now you basically have a perfectly invisible listening device on this relay. Okay. That if it is tapped by third-party users, you will hear it. Okay. Now we're heading to Narendra. Two days it's going to take us. Well, I'd say you're about a you're about a day away now. A day away now. How fast are we going? Can the USS Ellaride be tracked in its speed right now? Well, we can outwork. So, so we, we should probably talk about that I, as as it is more of a story movement at this yeah. point. Um, I assumed that you wanted to get there with all due speed. Yes. So I, uh, even though it does. I know there's a protocol in place for breaking a certain warp limit, but considering the circumstances, I was assuming you were going maximum warp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were. Which is why it was like two days. Warp What's, nine. How, warp nine is, is we're two Well, it's, I think it's 9.75 think, no. okay, or something. Great. Um, that's our maximum okay. uh, warp, I think. Cruising speed for an Intrepid is seven, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I think cruising is... Yes. You guys are a fast ship. If we Sally Wright can haul. The reason I ask is, is if we were going cruising, I would have been like, we need to be going a little bit faster. Okay. Yeah. okay, cool. If we're already going maximum, then we're going maximum. Yeah, yeah I, well, I, I, I just okay, assumed you guys wanted to good, hop, good, skip good. it, and jump it. We should have clarified that. I but think it's, like I said, the it's fastest anything. Unless around going maximum warp can like raise a red flag, mm. which I didn't. You know what I mean? Which I didn't want to do. But I'm like, but, it, uh, but it's we possible. We just look really pissed, like casual. We left in a hurry. Yeah, it's not like casually fast. But here's the thing: you also have to consider is that the people living on. Calvania Station and the yeah. equipment that they have on Calvania Station probably is not as capable of tracking a ship at warp as that's what I assume. Federation, Klingons, everybody else. That's what I assume. Yeah. So going maximum is not putting us or Zaz I would in say it's probably not putting you guys suspicious. Great, cool. So yeah. then we're a day away. They're right. going yeah. to play it. Yeah. So now we have <laughs> surveillance set up on the station, on the pirate station. Uh, the, you've got surveillance set up on uh, on, this on this relay. relay in, in that is important to Shackleton. The other that, thing that, that we have could, to do that is very likely to be getting some traffic from the from Calvania Station. Yes. The next item on the priority list, I believe, was sending out some decoy messages to try to try to throw any okay. followers off of our trail. Was that Which correct? We could probably just do here since we're. Well, out there. here's what I'll do. Instead of making this a roll two, if you want, burn two more momentum. And what I'll do is is I'll make it even more difficult for them to. Uh, Catch on that it's like if you if you We're guys want to burn the momentum, I'll yeah, just make yeah. that a part of the story. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So you guys basically very skillfully cover your tracks and make some very juicy nitpick like fake messages. Good. Essentially. I submit the paper. Here some fanfic. <laughs> Sounds good. Good. Juicy. All right. Juicy. Yeah. And some fanfic. Yep, that was right. me. And then the Stupid pirate Orion captain <laughs> grabbed the Mexican captain by his. Oh, oh. hello. What? Mm-hmm. Hair. Oh, no, gosh. no. I'm sorry. Delete. <laughs> Penis by his penis? <laughs> <laughs> like, Eric came fail. to the line and didn't cross it, but I'm going to. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, all of a sudden I have glasses for whatever reason. I'm looking at this and I'm like, gee, this is very, uh, <laughs> this is uh, the way appropriate. Wait, wrong, wrong he's like, papers, yeah, he's like wrong wow, paper. I see. Oh, I, I, I gotta say, I didn't realize you were in the room. Hashtag <laughs> not safe for work. <laughs> this, is, uh, 
Yeah. This is pretty good. <laughs> Apologies to the Ox crew. It was a team effort. Ox yeah. crew has a not safe for work policy on the Discord, and we're um, just constantly pushing you guys to have to remind everybody. I don't know about the subject matter. It is talented writing. It is good writing. Mm. So Thank you, sir. Maybe you guys have a future in. I also I also did a doodle. <laughs> I see. Oh, there's that's an illustration. The, oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Yes. Okay. I try to get the likeness as close as possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought the shading was really, really, really it is. nice. Considering you've never seen that, that's pretty accurate. That's I, pretty. I, good. I just want to say that part of, the, part of the joy of these little comedy contingents that we go off on is watching both Sam and Lisa try to keep character. <laughs> and keep a straight face. No, this is room keeping character. That's <laughs> 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 um, good. What is my ship? Can you take a look at this? Is is that, do, would you approve of that? It's a ship. Um, is it a good doodle? That's what it is. Uh, artistically, it ship. has merit. Um, I call it Fifty Shades of Warp. Emotionally, I'm 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 not sure I'm I'm here for it, sir. Okay, yeah, you know the commander doesn't know if they buy it. I would go back to the drawing board on the story to get a point. It's just a first draft. Okay, yeah, great. yeah, we'll work on it. All right, There's so, definitely a lot more where that came <laughs> So. <laughs> Is there permission to leave the bridge? <laughs> Denied. <laughs> Look at this again. Permission to enter escape pod, Captain. <laughs> uh, so, um... Oh my gosh. Uh, the messages, the <laughs> false messages are set in place. They do make some pretty convincing fake messages mm -hmm. uh, that are being relayed through there. Um, and just to remove any complications, we'll say that you actually... Are, I'm, I'm guessing... The, the thing is, is you might want to... I'm assuming you're telling the ranger station you're planting false messages in the relay station. <laughs> I mean, you guys are only the Federation starship operating out here, but mm -hmm. it might still be good to know so that the home base knows. No reason that, not to read them in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually can tell our superior officers something mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we can trust the Federation. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so all of this having been. Uh, Done. Do you guys and you get under Wage Narendra? Yes. Okay, so it takes about six hours. Get it all under wrapped up, and Sally once again turns back towards Narendra and heading into jumping into warp. Just whoosh. great. Um, w unless there's any scenes, we'll just go ahead and cut to you guys arriving at Narendra. Well, we worked on the second draft, mm -hmm. and we the science department will mm -hmm. have done the grav the. Study. Yes. Okay, yes. so science. let's cut to the research station for a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you and Lieutenant Baker have been quietly and diligently working. Um, when after it's been about three hours of you both just exchanging data, comparing notes, bringing this up on screen, um, it happens. Where she finally just sets down a data pad and says. Commander. Yes, Lieutenant. Are you all right? Yes. I, I, I don't want I, 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 to... I know this is going to sound... The, the, the equivalent of embarrassing you, I know that's not something I can actually do, and, but I just... I don't want to be inappropriate, but... I, if you don't mind my saying, sir, I, I don't think of you just as a mentor, but as a friend, and, and... Are you all right? I am all right. Thank you. I was able to regain my composure and... Reflect on the events, and you, I apologize for putting you and my fellow crew members in that position. Do you mind if I ask what happened? I mean, I got the the, the briefing, the, the debriefing of, about the orb of journeys and everything, but I, I purposely stayed away from what happened inside. I didn't think it was any of my business, but it seemed like maybe it wasn't good news? Information is information, and the way we take it, the way we perceive it, is what makes it good or bad. I received some information that was very significant for my sense of self and my identity, and because I had been not as diligent in my own upkeep of emotional maintenance and disciplined in my med meditation, I received that news very poorly. So it was not good or bad, it was the way that I received it that could be called bad. Um, I suppose that makes sense. Hmm. 
Have you ever received news or learned something that changed how you thought of yourself? Kind of. There was a... I've loved science ever since I was a little girl, and... I used to go... <laughs> I used to get in trouble a lot because i just run off and collect things <laughs> wherever I was. And I remember my... There was this one time my my parents, they got angry at me one time. And I thought they were going to punish me, but then... And my dad... This is a silly story. It's just... My dad, he... <laughs> He started building up an expectation. He, he told me that if I stopped running off, he was going to show me something pretty amazing. Um, we didn't live too... F we, lived, we lived in this sort of rural area where there was, there was a large... It was kind of a mountain nearby. It was kind of like, it was like a large hill, really, but it was, it was, I always thought of it as a mountain when I was a kid. And he kept telling me there was something really special on top and that he would show me one day if I was good. And so I started being good, and it was hard. But I kept thinking I'd go to sleep at night thinking about, oh my gosh, what is he going to show me? And he started making all these wild claims like there was something really special, something ancient on top of this hill that was going to have all these mysteries and secrets attached to it that he would need my help to uncover. And I mean, he just carried on and on about it, and he really stretched it out. I mean, it was like months of me behaving myself and not running off until one day he woke me up before sunrise and he said, Dorothy, it's today, this is the morning, get up. And I shot up in bed and I remember jumping out and I already had like a pack ready under my bed, which kind of surprised him. And I, I pulled it out and put on my shoes and I put on my thermals, which was a bad idea because it turns out it was a really hot morning that morning. And we went out and I was so excited and he led me down this path that I had never found before, and we, we walked for hours. And it was nice, because I got to talk to my dad, and I got to like, get to know him a little bit better. And Dad never really had a head for science, um, so he would mostly listen to me do the talking about wanting to draw maps and stuff. That was like my favorite thing. And we got to the top of the mountain, finally. It was late in the afternoon by the time we got there. And when we arrived, there was nothing there. And Your he, father lied to you. Yeah, he, well, kind of. He, there was nothing on top of the mountain. There was no runes, there was nothing special. And I remember being so angry and I felt so cheated. And I remember asking him, where is it, Dad? You said there was gonna be this great thing. And he said, look, and he pointed and of course it was the landscape and it was like, it was beautiful, but I, I was here to see runes. I was here to see something incredible. And then he said, if you're going to be a good scientist, kid, you need to learn to see the incredible in what you're doing every day. I hated that. <laughs> And he could tell I hated that. My dad tried to come off like some kind of wise guru sometimes, and it bugged me. But then, when I joined Starfleet and I started going out to deep space and seeing all these amazing things, I mean, I had to be an adult when it finally happened, but... I realized that was the best day I had with my dad. We spent the whole day climbing that hill and talking. And then now that I'm out here, I, I think about that, that landscape all the time where I grew up. And I just kept thinking about how much stuff I was missing because I was so focused on what was on top of the mountain. I was missing what I was walking past when I was going up. That sounds like a very valuable lesson to learn as a child. <laughs> I didn't really get it when I was a kid. I kind of get it now. 
I mean, but I remember being really upset. Not, you know, not Vulcan upset, but I was, I was upset. And, but now I realize that was one of the best memories I have as a kid. I have spent most of my life learning not to have expectations of things. And I think that is still a valuable way to live. Do you mind if I ask, if it was an expectation that got you angry, what was it? I wanted to know everything. And I expected, I expected the orb of journeys to tell me everything. And that is very, very much in keeping with my desire to attain knowledge. But the emotionality, I could not control that disappointment. Hmm. There were no runes on my mountain, or perhaps there were fewer than I had hoped for. She kind of glances over, and you see her eyeline has gone to the Orb of Journeys, which is still in the alcove behind a force field, glowing brightly. And she just says, oh. I don't know what the takeaway is, really. I mean, I feel like it's right in front of my face, but... I think I wrestle with expectation, too. The one thing I walk away from with this is that I try to remember every time I'm mapping something... Let's just say that when we woke up after being frozen for a year and a half, I actually found the work of remapping Shackleton to be kind of exciting. I understand that. Um, Talon looks over at the Orb of Journeys. I still need to learn the lesson of... I believe the captain calls it going with the flow. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good lesson. Let me know what it's like when you find how, how to do that. I will. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you. And I hope that if, you know, you and the orb ever have another experience, that you get more answers. And I hope that I will learn to accept what answers it does or doesn't give me. I guess I should get back to work. And then two of you just turn and quietly go back to tapping away on your buttons. Um, Sally Ride comes out of warp. I knew that was going to happen. Well, <laughs> what did I forget? It wasn't true. No, 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 it's not a forget. I didn't say anything, but uh, at some point during this journey, I'm just going to put in a request to Commander Rue uh, at a time of their convenience to arrange to come by Sick Bay for some deep scans. Mm. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. You guys are you guys are putting together your preliminary information for mm-hmm. the big, the big yes. scan, so to speak. Yeah. So okay. just that message is there. Okay. And whenever the right time comes. So I should I should go ahead and tell you this because we didn't cover that in the recap. But one of the big things that got visited last episode was uh, Dryden is becoming a little more vocal about needing to be put back into memory. And as a result of it, Dryden is starting to, the Dryden personality is starting to blur with the Janiel personality a little Whoa. bit. And Whoa. it's becoming such an issue that, um, that Janiel and Throlo have had discussions about how to move forward in fixing that. They included surgery, which would have been very invasive and dangerous. And the other one is experimental and would not be sanctioned by the Federation because it involves using the whatever it is that Jenny put inside Throlo Mm. to neutralize (laughs) any damage caused by any residual nanite activity Mm. in the symbiont. Yeah. Highly experimental and dangerous, but also the most intriguing and certainly going to be the most thorough solution if it works. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... But at least so. last time it seemed indicated that one option was to just do more 
scans. Non-invasive deep scans. Deep scans, yes. might render those other solutions less present. Well, deep, deep scans will, re- will give you the information you, you need information. on which decision you need to make, hmm. essentially. Yeah. Um, and, but essentially, with the deep scans in mind, you, you are going to be able to do these thorough, I mean, this is essentially the Star Trek version of a CAT scan where you're going to have to lay mm-hmm. down and get you know, scanned for a good five to ten minutes. I but, present myself for that, and okay. I bring the Andorian antenna. I hold it on my chest. We made up a is thing last time that they got handed yeah. out as party favors at the wedding. Yeah, we wanted yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I that. No, because we all yeah. wore them during the during That's the show. Super cute. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so Janiel, you step into the sick bay, and um, Matazi nods to you when you walk in and says, "Shall I go, doctor, or would you need me?" I would appreciate the assistance. It's, I, I can stay and go at your command. I mean, if anybody would know how to do a CAT scan. <laughs> oh! Matazzi. <laughs> Dead jokes. I'm, I'm <laughs> checking roof for signals as to, okay. Um, we would appreciate your assistance. I have plenty to give. Anything from my commander. Perfect. Right. <clears throat> All right, Matazi takes position. Um, so but these are the less comfortable pillows I replicated after uh, your much earlier visit. Obliged. I appreciate you taking feedback into account in your sick bay. I'll make note of it in performance reviews. It's no accounting for taste. I don't have a medical category for that. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna kind of homebrew some of this. Um, I'm gonna say go ahead. Let's we're gonna say this is a 10 minute scan. Um, you're only gonna need to do this once. Um, so Sally rides. Sally Ride is going to be able to use her hollow projectors um, to be able to replicate exactly what it is you're scanning, as well as her scanning equipment. What's the what is Sally's medical score again? Her me- I think uh, it's two. Is it two? Dude, I think we upgraded. Didn't she get an upgrade on her um, medical we facilities? Upgraded. No, it is a two. It is a two. Okay. Yes. So. Oof. Well, that's just her, that's not just her systems, but her medical staff as well. Mm-hmm. And and but you still have the emergency medical hologram, correct? The yeah. image. Or, okay. Yep. Um, so, <clears throat> um, what I'm going to say here then, um, I'll do this. Let's just do your standard reason medicine check. Um, Sally Ride can assist using her. This would definitely be a sensors roll. Sensors medicine. Sensors. Yes, I would say sensors medicine. Okay. I'll give you the option of making this computers, but I think sensors is probably better for Sally, correct? It doesn't matter. Six of one, half dozen. Okay, cool. So then, yeah, uh, medicine. And uh, I'm going to set the difficulty here at three. And we get an assist from the image? Not the image, but Matazi. Okay. Matazi um, will assist. And Sally Ride, of course, as I said, gets to assist. I'm um, inclined to do that. I'm, I'm uh, waiting Matazzi's as we get the details character. here. Um, Lieutenant Matazi, I better get used to playing your stats, buddy. Uh, All right. Yeah. So I'm gonna have Matazi roll. <coughs> I'm gonna have Matazi roll insight and medicine for his. Um, may I spend one momentum for an extra die? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can't assist. assist. Oh, oh, oh that's right. I'm assisting. Yeah. Um, all right, so I only get one die. All right, but but he does have cautious. Is taking oh, I can't spend one. The doctor's going to take one. I would like to. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out whether there's there's something in the book about taking difficulty down for being in sick bay, but I think that's a combat rule that I'm remembering. I believe it is. Okay. Um, but Tazi, however, um, but Sally's assisting, so <laughs> it's one down anyway. Yeah, it's great uh, yeah, because it's using sensors. So it's using means, sensors, correct? Yeah. So that means it's so to three two. down to two. Yeah, or four down right. to three. All right. Um, and have I already spent this one, or am I? You doing haven't it now? yet. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. Two, 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 and. Oh. Matazi crits. Yeah. Woo! Hell yeah. <laughs> you also already have one from Sally as well, so <laughs> roll away. Let's, so how much momentum are we gonna get? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Reroll. <laughs> Although that is my number, so. Yeah, but. This is it. Who rolls two 19s? <laughs> uh, still. Did you get one success? I got two. Okay, you're fine. So, so one, four two, successes, three, you're gonna get. Four, five. Five successes. All right, so you're gonna get some momentum back. Two, um, three, three, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Unless um, we use them on info, which I might be. All right, so a deep scan. Um, 
So you do a thorough deep scan down to Janiel's DNA. You're able to start tracking some... Uh, n- now, a lot of this information is getting sort of repeated, Doctor. What you're seeing in the scans, a lot of it looks like a repeat of the information that it was already in Starfleet Medical Records. Um, you're, you are seeing a few other notable... Um, changes, and, and this looks like it's just normal aging effects. Like, Janiel has actually gained some muscle mass in their upper body since they were last deep scanned. Um, <laughs> um, um, but what you also are noting that uh, as the data starts to come in, um, Doctor, you do detect um, there is residual evidence of Borg nanite activity in Janiel. Um, it doesn't look like it's fully operational. It doesn't look like it's operating on... on I, I wouldn't say it's dormant, but it does seem to be in the bloodstream. I would say that there are active, non-functioning Borg nanites in Janiel's system. What is an active, non-functioning nanite? So a, a functioning Borg nanite would it would be attempting to assimilate Janiel on the cellular level mm-hmm. by creating other Borg nanites, assimilating cell after cell after cell, and before long, Janiel would be assimilated. Um, these nanites, from the activity that you're detecting in the scan, they are not attacking the, the neighboring cells. Um, instead, there looks like there's residual damage, which you would guess from, the, from all the information you're getting, what you would guess is the damage caused by what appears to be a high-level MPH, or, uh, yeah, EMP, um, seems to have permanently damaged the functionality of these Borg nanites, making it impossible for them to assimilate. However, they are still partially functioning. So you will watch as occasionally one of these nanites will kill a cell and then kill another cell. It's not happening at a rate that's actually a functioning, that's actually affecting Janiel on any metabolic level or any psychological level, except for all of it is happening within the confines of the, of the symbiote. And the presence of those could conceivably provoke inflammatory response that does its own damage. Like the, it, it, whatever it is doing in there it has to be the cause of what's happening. And yes, there is obviously some kind of biological response to their presence that's causing the, the symbionts, biologic, biological systems to react, which theoretically is probably what's causing the symbiont to have difficulty being able to... <laughs> when, you, when, when, when Trill are using their memories, it's like bookmarks. You close the book and you can set it aside. Whenever you need to read it again, you can pick it up and open it up again. Right now, Janiel can't close the book. And it's probably because of the activity that's taking place inside. And it's happening on a, what, and what you, where the medicine is getting kind something of- something in the symbiote that's equivalent to executive functions in the brain. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. It would be, it would be like, it would be like compulsory behavior. That's that, like a, like, like the part of your brain that keeps you Controlled that keeps that's, that's able to say, okay, well, I'm feeling sad, but I'm not going to break down crying right now. I'm feeling this, but I can hold, but I'm not going to act on my anger. Like that portion of the brain, it's kind of functioning in the same way in the symbiont, apparently. Um, now, there is a lot of data in the medical journal that you have read to suggest that multiple doctors have hinted that this might be the case, but they didn't have sufficient information at the time to actually make a a judgment call. The the data that you're getting back with that role in Sally's medical facility would indicate that that is in fact the case. Um, Where it's getting a little gray, where medicine is starting to get a little fuzzy, where it gets granular is why this is having a, the the psychological effect that that's having on on Janiel. Rue not being able to control the memory of Dryden is interfering psychologically with Janiel. No, I need a pencil. And so it's like a television station Janiel can't shut off. Making me angry. Except for <laughs> the personality of Dryden. That Janiel is reporting that Dryden has been able to take control of their facilities from time to time would indicate that there could be psychological damage happening. There could be something neurological taking place. It's different. This is where this is where trill physiology and in, in the symbiont. This is where it gets really tricky with medicine. Um, but theoretically, theoretically, if the damage was repaired in the symbiont, theoretically, this would correct itself. If you could turn it off, just like people are able to adjust and live with uh, psychological conditions. Janiel would be able to find a center eventually and be able to resume being able to control the activity that they have with Dryden. 
That's all you get from the scan. 10 minutes scan, about 20 minutes to diagnose, and Matazi is there the whole time, leaning over and just going, Commander, uh, can I get you some blood wine, perhaps? Or some, uh, the, the Lieutenant Commander always likes pomic soup. I'm sorry? Uh, refreshments? Anything I could get you? No. Uh, Rue has been much more still than the very physically fidgety commander typically is. You can infer quite easily that they have been dissociating during the scan as a means of coping. Poorly. Um, Matazi moves over to you as you're finishing up your data and completing all of this, and he leans down and says, well, it kind of confirms everything, doesn't it? The nanites have to be removed. Uh, I'm not ready to discuss the results of our scans quite yet. Uh, let's give the commander some time. Would you like me to give you the room? Yes, please. I'll just go fetch that right away, Doctor. Please excuse me. And Matazi turns on his toe beans and walks out. <laughs> Steps out into the hallway. Um, Eric, I've heard, th I wanna make sure that I understand. Yeah. I've heard three things as versions of what might need to happen. Yeah. One was stopping the activity of the nanites. Mm -hmm. One was repairing the damage done to the symbiont and one was removing the nanites. Uh, which one of those, is it like, if we can accomplish any of those things, it works? Yes. Okay. I mean, the, I would say the takeaway is, is no matter what happens, the nanites either have to be destroyed or removed. They have to come out, they can't stay. You can't they, just dormant them the rest of the way. Uh, how, I mean, unless you wanna I mean, try to use another EMP, but that, that, could, that could critically injure the symbiont. Another EMP on that level would be it, it almost killed the symbiote. Because well, we have time. our first evidence right now that they can be rewritten to be less vicious, which means I wonder if they can be written, written to be asleep forever. It's, um, I'm just asking questions. So yeah, no, no. And the answers are um, with with the information that you have. Like one of the ways, uh, when I say destroyed, it doesn't it doesn't mean going in there and pew pew. It could mean literally injecting. <laughs> it, it could I'm injecting <laughs> you into your own system. We're figuring yeah. this out. We're just Mini starts punching their chest yeah. with a crutch. <laughs> I'm putting you in a custom holiday program where we shrink you down and you navigate inside your good. own cells. <laughs> oh, like that wouldn't be a great Star Trek episode. Uh, Can I do yeah. that? It's like Star Trek, Star Trek mis Trek mis uh, mystery, uh, the, the Miss Frizzle. And the, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get you to remove my own nanites? So this is, so theoretically, this can be done one or two ways that you have on hand right now. Um, you can attempt the surgery, which would be critical and possibly kill the symbiote, which would kill Janiel. That's the risk of surgery. Um, then there's the experimental treatment, which theoretically wouldn't do either, but it might exasperate. You don't know exactly what it will do currently, um, because right now you're the only real test subject but if you were able to synthesize something, you do have in your system at least the trace elements of a biological system that was able to assimilate nanites and convert them into organic cells. Literally breaking down the technology of a Borg nanite and making it organic, the way a Borg nanite takes organ organic material and converts it into synthetic. But yeah. that, like I said, that's gonna that's gonna be all on you, and it's gonna be experimental and it'll be tough. But it's also gonna be the highest the highest probability of success is gonna be. Well, let me put it this way: the high risk, high reward strategy. High risk, high reward strategy. Yes. As opposed to the one which maybe kills you, I say out of character. That is mid reward. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also high risk. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I have been puttering sort of silently around for a minute or two, uh, well, making it clear that we are done with the immediate scans and waiting to see if you sit up. Um, I do, and I start going through uh, stretches, uh, moving. Commander, I have some 
preliminary results from the scan. All right. No tactician of your caliber will be surprised by a situation where no choice is particularly desirable. Well, I'm obliged to follow a talk tactical doctrine by my captain whereby there is no such thing as a no-win scenario. I like your thinking. Your the specialists have worked with you in the past. We're worried that while not a full assimilation response, uh, there was occasional autonomic activity from the nanites, which were never successfully removed from your system. Yeah, the symbiosis commission came by when I was in early rehab. They gave a bunch of instruction to the Starfleet medical doctors. I was only privy to about half of it. So hopefully all of it's in the medical report. We've confirmed it now. The activity is occurring. It is minor on the scale of your general functioning, but it appears to be interfering in one key area. Activity and the body's response in the symbiont may be what is responsible for the psychological effects you've been experiencing with the roof symbiont. At this point, Janelle, you're aware that Dryden is standing in the room. Yeah. You had seen me cutting my eyes away like I was waiting for someone to arrive. You were Dryden, right about something. Dryden's not, he's not really looking in your direction. He's just kind of looking at the floor and shaking his head. Sorry, what was that, Commander? All right, so, bad news. Um, how effective will our tactical response be? What are our options? We have a range of weapons at our disposal. Uh, that doesn't roll off your tongue. I, I was going to make up something about them uh, and, and spreads and things, but I might abandon that attempt. <laughs> Is that what I sound like when I talk science? <laughs> well, I think you usually pull it off much better. <laughs> but uh, There's a certain charm. <laughs> there are two major courses of treatment that we can investigate if we so choose. The first is another direct surgery. You're familiar with a lot of the risks. 17 is the charm. It's possible. Does any of this information from the scans improve our chances over the other 16? Does it? You have more information that's conclusive at your disposal than the other doctors did but removing Borg nanites from a symbiont's never been tried before. We have more information, but it wouldn't be responsible for me to pretend that that gives me certainty. Yeah. And I would here make up a professional percentage increase that I think is medically responsible to say about <laughs> that, which you can sure. tell me later. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Dryden says, I know you don't give a damn, but I'm completely against the surgery idea. <sighs> don't make me doubt myself by agreeing with me. <clears throat> You're with me, Rue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? sorry, did I? Yeah. Just making sure. Thank you. And... The other option, if it's a road we want to walk down, is that we have in this data bank over here a cabinet full of samples drawn from my recent experience with Borg Nanites and the first on record successful accidental 
destruction of them from a living system. If that sort of thing worked, could it be extrapolated upon for other people? I think it would be irresponsible not to consider that and the implications. You notice how she's leaving out the fact that she'd be using a sample of blood that was taken from a classified object that Starfleet wants to get their hands on? This is not going to be on the books. Well, of course, if there's a problem with you and Section 31 found out that I was having any problems with my symbiont, they'd come after me. Well, I'm just I'm saying... I'm dead if this gets out. So is she. I'm just saying, Janiel, if she's willing to do this, you can trust her for sure. And that's coming from me. I trust her with my life. I think I trust her with your life, too. You're endorsed. What was the part about dying in the middle there? <laughs> well, so Rue, and, and, and feel free to tell me, when you have these conversations with Dryden, the, the way they happened in the episode of DS9, when they were happening, right? when she was, when, when Dax was actually discussing this with her, her other yeah. me- memories, she was having these conversations, but they actually oh, were just... not being said out loud. To every... well, However... Generally speaking, it's like a Lulu good idea thing, but well, what I, was gonna s- I kind of like that I'm muttering and just generally not holding it together as well as I used to be. Yeah, okay. and what I was going to say was, is we've actually reached a stage with Dryden where that is probably happening, yeah. So, but I just wanted to narratively let you guys have the option. Mm-hmm. You can pick either way. Yeah. If I... you've been muttering, then I said that, and if not, I did not. Personally, mm-hmm. as, I like as somebody it. who's it's watching, I, I like it. Me yeah. too. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's play to our audience, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Please, this Pander is very fun. Please. Yeah. Keep going. Um, actually, we have to pause because it's five thirty. We got to go on our break. <laughs> yeah, we hit we hit five thirty. So find we, out, find out what we're doing. So let's see. Like, what was that part about yeah, yeah, the yeah. dying in the middle? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so let's, let's take no, let's take a ten minute break. We'll be back in ten minutes, and we can get the scene, and we can get to Narendra Station and have a conversation with Zadis. Woo! And then okay. set this whole thing up, get underway. Um, so we will be right back in ten minutes, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a minute. Uh, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> break. <laughs> This is getting more and more ridiculous. We're getting worse than Critical Role at this point. Um, uh, they are this, so creative. Though. <laughs> um, I was I was picturing Jenny becoming like ego, like from the yes. comics, like Ooh. a giant planet with a face that just <laughs> colonizes all the other worlds and destroys all uh, everything that is not it. Well, well, no, becoming wait, this hold super on. mega <laughs> evil <laughs> biological well, entity. Well, well, well. <laughs> I mean, like that wasn't my first concern. But, like, <laughs> then she turned out to be super cool. Rue's last words before they're <laughs> grown over is. I told you. Yep. The end. I told you. It wasn't All right. Oh, no, Jenny right. is not evil. All right. Sad sick bad times. Let's Everyone go. is say, Eric. No. Hashtag. Um, no. Okay. Uh, so we are going to pick up right where we left off. Um, so we're back in the medical bay. You guys are having this discussion about yes. um, the procedures. Dryden is, of course, standing uh, not too far away from the medical bed in which you are sitting up on now. Um, and what was that about dying? <laughs> and what was that about dying? Yeah, Matazi has Commercial. left the room. Um, you guys are still underway to Narendra Station. Just... Section 31 would be looking for me if it were found out that I had trouble with my symbiont, that maybe Dryden was coming back in any measure. Oh, that is a complication. It's my job to measure security concerns. Does it interfere with your work? It, it, mm-hmm. Not the work itself. I. I. My goodness. Uh, one. One doesn't always. Get. You think you want a thing, and then you're on the cutting edge of a wonderful new treatment, and. It turns out it's just as complicated as everything else. I felt that about the Akira class. (laughs) I can't help asking why. (sighs) 
Well, it's really to do with the mass ratio and tractor beams when you're dealing with much larger ships. I really wanted to see something along the lines of a dreadnought class. We've lost those large mass ships and we built the Defiance in response to Wolf 359, but it doesn't answer any of the tactical concerns that were raised by that battle. And I have been thoroughly dragged off topic. Mm -hmm. And if this procedure works, I won't feel responsible keeping that knowledge if it's reproducible to myself, but if it puts you in danger, that's an unacceptable outcome. But also doing nothing is an unacceptable choice for us, unless it's the choice you want to make. I, last time we discussed this, you did say you wanted to read the captain and, and for something like this, that seems like a good idea. I understand you have responsibilities to your patient, but I remember seeing a lot of other people and they tried things and it didn't work and they coded 359 and we lost them and if we could save people like we like we saved you that's worth she doing even if it me. puts me at risk that's worth doing even if it puts me at risk. But I'm the responsibility of the captains, so I dare say he has some input in such things as well and might have some insight. Captain words. Mm -hmm. Do we have time for this scene right now? Just do it. Okay. Just go. We all want to see it. Doctor should show us to Captain Martinez. <laughs> Captain here, go ahead, Doctor. Uh, if you have a moment, can you come by sick bay? I'm on my way. Captain out. And true to like a television styled formatted show, seconds later, <laughs> we cut to <laughs> Martinez walking in the doors of the sick bay. Um, you see uh, Throlo, Dr. Shasiros is in here alone with Commander Rue. Commander? Doctor? Captain? What's going on? Captain, we have an interesting set of choices. Uh, Commander, I'd like to let you take the lead on this, but I can provide any details you might need. Thank you, Doctor. You'll recall I've had medical issues with my symbiont since we left on this mission, and it appears that they're getting worse and require intervention at this point. Our choices as I understand them from Dr. Shashiros are to perform a high-risk surgery on my symbiont, which could kill me and kill, by extension, uh, me as a host, as a genial, or to try, in some extent, to replicate what happened to throw it to Dr. Shishiros and hope that works. With Jenny? Why, sir? It's a little outside the bounds of day-to-day -day medicine, but nothing about this is routine. If it works and has been replicated first in one and then in me, then it would be of tremendous scientific value, medical value could potentially be used. As a defense against the Borg. But, but by the same token, not only does it imperil Jenny, but the it alerts and everybody on it, right? Section 31. And to, Rue specifically. To give you some more context, Captain, if you were to authorize this and it was discovered it happened, it would end your career. And it would probably cost the Sally Ride and her bridge crew considerably, because everything would be unmasked. It would be high risk. I think there's no chance we can concoct a fake story about where we found the sample. I have a feeling the Sally Ride might have some skills in that, in that arena. <laughs> But, Hacking, you say? but again, it's only if this comes out. Like, mm. I, And uh, as Commander Rue is trying to elide here, but it seems particularly relevant, <clears throat> they might particularly become a target for that one organization we've recently come into contact with if, any, if it's known that anything needed fixing. How much time do we have? How much time do we have? How soon do you have to engage well, in this procedure? Well, in all honesty, experimental. 
Uh, in, in all honesty, Doctor, um, the symptoms do not seem to be worsening at an alarming rate in any way. It seems like it's been very slow and gradual. I'm alarmed. Mm. <laughs> Dryden will also raise his hand to the mm. GM. Uh, excuse the me. The point at which he loses motor control is cause um, for alarm. Which he's done once before. Um, when you were sitting down with uh, as you well remember. I, I do somehow somehow recall, which is, which is fine. <laughs> Captain, progress, uh, the, the, the changes have so far been slow, but they've reached a point that's pretty concerning. So we probably need to commit to a course of action, but I don't think that we're, we're not talking about hours. We're talking about more than hours. That was unclear. <laughs> okay. Doctor. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hmm. Be the death of me. So the risk is great. Yes, sir. To everyone on this crew and to the alien organism that we befriended itself. I would imagine that if you were to do this and it were to work, that that planet would become a target to everyone in the Federation. And outside the Federation. I imagine yeah. the Romulans would be incredibly interested given their propensity for interest in Borg attack. Any of the people who've done piratical work in Borg attack, if Malgog found it. The Heaven other option us. is a surgery that could kill you. But not endanger anybody else. <laughs> but it has been tried before. No one actually recovered from that, did they? Like, talking and being a person? You don't have to answer that, Doctor. I... You don't. Uh, this, sir, I referred, I'm, I'm sorry, I referred to the previous attempts. Oh yeah, no, I... To repair the symbiote damage directly. Yeah, those, those you, did. Right. Th those went poorly. Mm. If there's one thing that I know that this ship and everybody on it is really good at now, <laughs> fortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, it's bullshitting. If we go through with this and it works, then that's a bridge that we will cross when we get to it. There are things I'm sure that we can forge, things that we can do to make this seem miraculous or, or, we may accidentally stumble across a means to fight and repel the Borg, which could save immeasurable lives. That's worth a high price and a high risk. It might be. And Jenny it is be. an intelligence. If she's capable of this, she may want to know. She may we may be, be able to negotiate be with her, become, we may be able to protect her. She may become an ally in the fight against the Borg, as opposed to something that could get taken advantage of and destroyed and so what's um, the way forward then, Doctor, for this sort of thing? Do we inject samples into me? Do we visit? I'm going to leave that up to the Doctor, because that's your area of expertise. I'm also not The how is up to me. The weather the is up to you. The weather. I, 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 thank you for letting me know, both of you. And just so you know, like I said, if it works, if this we go down this path, we will cross that bridge when we get to it and we will figure it out. We have a lot of smart people on this ship. It's much smarter than me. As a certain commander recently reminded me, we don't have to believe in a no-win scenario. I like that quote. <laughs> I, I listen. I would also add to that, even though the risk is great, risk is our business. It's what we do. So, commander, Sir. Janiel, this is your call. Whichever way you want to go, it's up to you. It's not my call to make. As far as things being on the books and official, we'll worry about that afterwards. This is going to be the commander's call, and then whatever you want to do, then we'll figure it out after that. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And thanks for letting me know. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm gonna get back to the bridge to worry about that other huge crazy thing, and then... <laughs> Another day on the OSS Sally Rod, sir. Another day, that's right. 
<sighs> okay. Quote of the game. <laughs> Quote of the game. Overwatch parody <laughs> waiting to happen. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so we'll we'll go ahead and move on unless you guys have something else. Um, there's just one. Yeah. Last. Um, I know it isn't just me that's affected by talk of all this. I know with nightmares, the thing I always hated is when you wake up in the middle of the night and you don't want to go back to sleep because you think you'll just slip back into it. And For me, it was always easier having someone around, so I replicated a sleeping bag if you'd like me to come by. Ah? Uh-huh. It's not an offer you have any obligation to take me up on in any way, but it's always available to you. You know, I, I, I think I might need to consult on medical issues at uh, some uh, surprising times. Um, it might be uh, convenient to... Yes, that would be nice. Well, then I will let you enforce naps upon me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I tap the console and leave. Okay. Writing fan fiction. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> has a good long think about personal and professional boundaries. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> <laughs> does not rescind anything just said. To nap or not to nap? That is the question. All right. Sally Ride comes out of warp. You see Narendra Station, beautiful as she ever was, floating listlessly in deep space. Um, traffic coming and going. The first thing you notice, though, that's different is you see what looks like a smaller version of an exterior docking port floating freely about uh, 60 kilometers off of the port of the station itself. And racked underneath this docking port is row after row after row of peregrine fighters. Um, The Sally Ride is instantly able to acknowledge that this is uh, Hornet Squadron. Captained by Tassim Vor, who you encountered, uh, looks like... Admiral Hebert called in. So no more Federation starships in the system is correct. Federation starfighters, however, are here on station keeping right next to Narendra Station. And it looks like they have set up a, in a docking pattern. They're in orbit of, around Narendra. And it looks like these fighters could launch at any any moment. Mm-hmm. When you guys come out of warp, um, you immediately hear docking control welcoming you back to Narendra Station and that you were cleared at docking bay two. I look over to the commander to see how they react to the fighters. <laughs> the birds came home to roost, sir. Okay, looks like they did. Um, <clears throat> there are two fighters that are currently uh, flying what looks like practice formations, um, not too far away from the Sally Ride. They don't break away. They continue doing their practice formations. How tight uh, is it? What's that? Like, do they look good? <laughs> they look pro, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they... They're out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know what kind of squadron they're sending over it here. It looks like they're like practicing. How, how, uh, Stupid sexy how much, squadron. <laughs> it looks how much like do they lift? You just said yeah. that because you're Boy, they do you like even, really Do you even parachute, really bro? <laughs> um, they're, they're pulling some pretty dangerous maneuvers, high G maneuvers in space. You know? oh, um, I want to do that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll nice. say this. Like, they're, they're pulling some maneuvers you don't see a lot of runabouts or shuttlecraft being able to pull. Um, Challenge exactly. Very, very close to what you might have seen in BSG when fighters would accelerate to top speeds and then literally flip back around going the opposite direction. These these peregrine fighters are pulling some maneuvers that they look like they're probably precursor to combat maneuvers. They're, they're combat drills, essentially. Um, and there's just two of them out right now. Um, you guys pull alongside Narendra. No, Sally does it too. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> docking, docking clamps come into place. Mm-hmm. You received word that... Uh, you were now officially docked at Narendra Station, and immediately uh, Admiral Hebert hails, comes up on screen. Um, on screen. When it comes up, you see Admiral Hebert um, at her desk, the flags of the Federation behind her, overlooking uh, deep space behind her, and she sets down a cup of coffee and says, Welcome back, Captain. Admiral? 
Uh, I don't have you listed due in for another week. What brings you back to Narendra? Well, we are a little bit ahead of schedule, and I come with some good news for once. <sighs> Nothing crazy, I hope. Well, it depends on uh, how you look at it, I guess. Uh, well, that's a better answer than I was expecting. Good. Well, you're free to come by my quarters later this evening and bring your staff if you like. I'm going to be making some of my... Well, it's a surprise, but let's just say that I know how to cook Indian food. All right. <laughs> Invitation accepted. Thank you, Admiral. <laughs> See you tonight. How is that a surprise? Cut off. <laughs> What's that? How is that a surprise? We didn't know it. She's not because, narrowing it down. <laughs> because there's not a lot of cooking being done these days. Mm -hmm. um, it's mostly replicated. I know. Mm -hmm. What's Never mind. Well, it was my favorite takeout it's food at the academy. Like, but I'm going to tell you exactly it. what it is. And then... She says this may come as a surprise, but oh, I cook good. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, where's the disconnect? I don't get it. I, I thought you said uh, this is a surprise. Yeah. No, this may come as a surprise, oh, but okay. I, I cook yeah. good. And I, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I, we both heard right, We both heard Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. all right. Way to spoil it. <laughs> okay. So um, you guys are all disembarking on to Narendra. Mm -hmm. the, um, the crew, oh, I'll just say that only... only Mandatory personnel are leaving the Sally Ride. Everyone else is ordered to stay on board. Mm -hmm. This is not shore leave after, after all. Mm -hmm. We can't um, afford another shore leave. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Something oh. always happens. On shore how, yeah. how long are we going to be docked? Um, I suspect it'll probably be about a day. Yeah. D depending. Okay. Um, In that case, bridge to engineering. This is Commander Jiv. What can I do for you, Captain? Commander, you've got a day. Make any and all necessary repairs or new retrofits, anything that you wanted to take care of while we're here. Um, Jiv looks over at you, Mala, as you're getting ready to leave engineering, and he just goes, a day. Thank you, Captain. I'll do that. Thank nice. you. And he just goes, a day. As I walk away, I just might want to start with the shuttles and just keep walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You hear, oh, as you're walking out, you go, you hear, I have a chief for that. <laughs> a chief who's got another job. Ben, as long right. as I'm commander, your job is what I tell you. You hear shouting down the hallway. <laughs> Just smile. <laughs> yeah, right. Mama! Shh! <laughs> this is um, a uh, proof of this insubordination. Yeah. Captain Martinez, the senior staff, go ahead and report to the transporter room. I'll meet you there. I know, right. sir. Okay. Um, so yeah, you guys um, head over to Narendra Station. Mm -hmm. um, Specifically to talk to Lynn Zadis first. Okay. I'm heading Let's straight there. I want the senior staff with me. We're going to talk to Zadis right now. Yes, okay. sir. Then what we'll do is this. We'll go ahead and just cut to you headed down to main engineering. Now, the last time you guys were in main engineering at Narendra Station. Oh. Um, <laughs> it, it was a different time. Yep. Memories. <laughs> um, yeah. Narendra, it looks like it's undergone some significant repairs. Um, there are not bodies everywhere. Yeah. The lights are a little brighter right now. There are still a number of Klingons down here, but there's also a significant number of Starfleet officers, and uh, as well as enlisted that are down here. Um, as you're approaching uh, the main core, you see, um, standing over by um, the multiple cores that power Narendra Station, um, there's two ensigns, Lin Zadis in full uniform, who's leaning up against the console, talking to a very um, warm-faced, uh, white-haired, uh, engineer-looking man and a black vest with an old Starfleet logo on it. <laughs> um, looks like he has engaged the engineers. He's holding what looks like a pack on his side, and he is having a intense conversation about, it sounds like, engineering protocols in the previous century at Starfleet. <laughs> and how things have changed. Particularly some complaints about replicators mm -hmm. and carpets. Mm. Um, and as you approach, she says, I how can it. you feel how fast you're going if there's carpets on the floor? I get it, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But as you approach, um, you see Zadis just go, oh my god. <laughs> he gets up and he goes, I'm sorry, Captain. Uh, and he goes, no, not at all, lad. I know them too. And, and everyone kind of turns around. Everyone is addressing all of you as Scotty turns and um, Zadis just goes, Hi! 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 Captain, well, Captain ever, uh, are you guys back on shore leave again? Not quite, yeah. Captain. Uh, no, 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 no. 
He, he, sure, permission granted, yeah. I mean, yeah. Grab, grab him. Yeah. Oh, hey, he just hugs you. I'm so happy to see you. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on duty right now, but... Um, Captain Scott, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, Captain. I'm actually just coming to say goodbye. Oh. I was glad I got to see you one last time before I headed out. You as well, sir. You as well. Where are you headed to? Well, I hate to admit it, but back to Earth. <laughs> I miss San Francisco. Ah, yeah. All right, well, I'm sure that we'll see you again, Captain, but um, if I can just take a moment, I'd just like to say it has meant the world to me that you had a conversation with me, sir. It had a <laughs> profound effect on me, so thank you for everything that you've done and, and live long and prosper. <laughs> well, lad, I can't say much because I've only just gotten to know you, but I can say this. And he puts his hand up. And as he takes your hand and he says, thank you for protecting our future. It's my honor, sir. And he nods to all of you. I just want to quickly, like, as he's passing, just, we had our own adventure with whales. <laughs> you did? <laughs> big, 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 big mouth whales. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> it's, it's charming until you have to beam them on board. <laughs> what do you feel like when, when they're mating? <laughs> Didn't have to see that. <laughs> <laughs> he nods to you and um, you watch as Commander, uh, as Captain Montgomery Scott uh, walks towards the turbo lift and he turns and looks back at you all and just gives you like a smile and a nod as the doors. Shh. Lynn Zaddis. Right, Zaddis, to, right, that's where we do. He, he uh, turns yeah. and looks at you and he goes, that was the chief engineer of the USS Enterprise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't say. Everybody he, in the Sally ride is aware of that. I he, made sure of that. He, that, that. That man has literally saved the Federation multiple times. Yeah. Has written the book yes. on engineering. I, I studied that man. Yeah. He is a, I'm sorry, give me a second. <laughs> he was talking to me. Yeah. He wanted to see the chief engineer of the station. Mm -hmm. That was me. <laughs> Lynn, is there a place where we could all go to discuss something privately? Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of places around here. Uh, the station's a bit bigger than an intrepid class, so we got a lot of... Um, how privately? Uh, the most private Private, possible. Very, 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 Well, very I've got my own quarters, so if you want to come back to the, to the, the engineer's room. Lead the way, please. Yeah. Um, oh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. As we walk, uh, do we have any languages in common besides mm. English? Do you speak Klingon? Everyone, the, about half the engineering staff in this oh, area right. speaks yeah. Klingon, just to be aware. I speak Klingon, Trill, and some Germanic Earth languages Interesting. from time to time. Mm, I don't think we have any languages in common. Uh, well, as we walk, I want to find my way to Rue's side and under my breath say, it may be wise for us to scan whatever room we talk in for bugs. I do so appreciate when our instincts align. That was the plan, I didn't even say anything. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this whole table. <laughs> yeah, we're on a wavelength. <laughs> we are a grand <laughs> It's a drop. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I engaged to long discussion about the Kitara set and how that's going on oh, our great. way back to the room. Yes, wonderful. Okay, so you find, so you're, you're led to Lynn Zadis' main, main quarters. like meeting room, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. So the chief engineer's meeting station is basically his office as you guys mm -hmm. walk in. Um, the last time you were in this office room, mm. <laughs> you had to beat down a Klingon <laughs> that was serving House Duros. Oh. As you walk into this office, you're looking around going, it, the uh, it was the quartermaster's office. Oh, no, um, this office is brightly lit. It's been redecorated. And you see the Federation, um, Federation and Klingon banners are in this room. Um, the place looks like it's been cleaned up. It looks like Zadis has actually kind of remodeled a bit. Um, but he moves That's in and he goes, uh, welcome to my personal <laughs> office. Uh, sorry, it's a bit messy. You seem like clearing off some engineering tools. And he's like, 
we've been having to do a lot of maintenance. Turns out when, in a, when, a, when a weapon detonates inside of uh, a warp core and freezes time in place for a year and a half, it causes some havoc on some maintenance for the systems. Mm -hmm. But it's been a lot of fun, and I'll, I'll have to tell you about it some other time, obviously, because we're doing other stuff right now, but it, it is really interesting. I, I'm sure it is, Lynn, <clears throat> uh, just real quick. It actually is really interesting, I've heard all of it. I'm, I'm absolutely agree. Uh, yeah. Crew, you know what to do? Um, take out transporter. I look confused. Scanning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> scanning uh, walls. Do my pictures. security check. Talon yeah, does her scan. He, he just looks Zero. at it and he goes, you're not scanning for changelings or something, are you? No. Oh, that is a good idea as well. Yeah, take those parameters as well. Yeah, good thinking, um, Zadis, good thinking. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. No stone um, unturned. What are you picking up, Chief? Uh, nothing, Great. sir. I, I, I just, um... <laughs> <coughs> Linda, uh, it also might be best if um, you ask your counselor to come here. My counselor? Mm -hmm. What's going on? We, we're going to tell you, but um, you trust him? My counselor? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, I see him once a week, as well as you can. Did you... It's it's Tristan, if anybody's curious. I, I speak to him. Oh. Talk to who you know. Um, is there a re uh, do you mind if I ask like what the what the purpose is? Lynn, we were going to ask you questions about what happened when you were taken. We want you to know that uh, we're looking out for your safety. We want to make sure that you're going to be okay, in every sense of the word. But we also need your help, desperately, so that we can go and right some pretty bad wrongs. So if you feel that it would be helpful to have your counselor here. He, you see this change in his face yeah. as he starts to realize what you're saying and he's mm -hmm. Okay, what do you need from me? Just information, that's okay, it. Okay, I'll give you everything I got. Great. Great. Do you know where he is? <sighs> Not, Not yet. yet. So you're 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 planning on finding him though. Yes. What do you need from me? Soon. We need everything and anything you're willing to give us. Okay. Um, schematics of, of the ship, weak points, anything. So the lieutenant, my counselor, he's we've been talking about this a lot. Um, the past couple of sessions, uh, and I don't. Mind telling you guys this? But. And before you do, just real quick, how's that scan going? Are we good? Are we clean in the? Yeah, there's nothing in here, really. Okay. Great. All clear, Captain. Great. Thank he you. He did miss a spot on the carpet, but <laughs> that's, fine. that's, that's fine. not a pertinent to security. That cling on no, no. Nice. it's a changeling <laughs> spot. Um, <Okay. laughs> Sorry, Lynn. Go, go on. <laughs> um, he, he goes. Okay. Um, so in some of the sessions that we've been having, yeah. Um. I just recently discovered, maybe about a month ago, that there's some, it's gonna sound way worse than it actually, well, no, it's, it's as bad as it sounds, but there's some repressed memory stuff happening. And uh, it, it's starting to answer a lot of questions mm -hmm. where some of my, uh, you know, my triggers are coming from. Like I'm, uh, apparently I'm in like a survival mode that I'm learning how to deal with mm -hmm. a little bit, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm dealing with that. I can tell you what I remember, but there might be some stuff that I That's literally fine. can't access right now. That is fine. But Talon. Yes. I'll let you go if you want. If you need to go, uh, uh, in. Oh. This ship. If it means finding him, whatever you're doing, I'll do it. Thank you. Lind. Captain, if you need me to, I can mind mind meld with him. You'd be exposing yourself to the trauma as well, Talon. It's not something to take on lightly. I understand, but I feel prepared. Chief, could you help with that in any way? Yeah. Okay. I can try. You can. All right. She can help. I would trust anybody in this room with my life, which means I trust the three of you with each other's 
memories and thoughts and emotions, so I think that you're up to the task. I believe in you, all three of you. Okay. <clears throat> he gives you the thumbs up, Lark. It's like pretty crazy that I found their names, right? Right. Thank you. Oh yeah, nicely done, by the Thanks. way. Thanks. Um, had to call in some favors, but yeah. yeah, pretty good stuff. That's not important right now, though. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna find him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And he sits back in the chair and he just says, uh, "Mala, can I can I just get your help real quick?" Yeah. Yeah. And as you come over, he just reaches out and takes your hand mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and says, okay, I'm ready. Do we need to be some more, more comfortable sitting or? Uh... If you are comfortable, we can proceed. I am more comfortable in an engineering bay than anywhere else. Good, good. Here, and I'm going to just grab a tool and put it in his other hand. Hey. <laughs> okay, he's give me, ready. Oh, give, give me one that doesn't have a... Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, give me yeah. something that doesn't activate. That, that's yeah, nothing good. Thank with you. lasers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Diagnostic weapon. That's good. He's ready. Fixing problems. I do have to roll for this, technically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. it says... Um, take but, momentum. Yeah. What's it say? <laughs> it says... This always requires a task of minimum difficulty one and can be opposed. Can spend momentum for deeper telepathic exchanges and to gain more info. So then it's going to be a difficulty one because Zadis is inviting you in. Right. Mm-hmm. Not opposed. Okay. Um, one thing I would tell you, Talon, going into this, um, it's important to note that, and let's just go ahead and address this out of character real quick, that <clears throat> um, with respect to traumatic experiences in people's lives. In this case, one of the things to keep in mind is Bolian psychology functions a little different than human psychology. Okay. So it's not going to be, it's going to be a different experience. You're going to, Zadis's mind processes things in a different way. I, my favorite example is Mass Effect. Um, uh, the uh, Salarians, they, their minds function completely differently. They're able to process things in a different way. They linger on one thing as opposed to another. Bolians are kind of the same way. It's why they're always so upbeat. Their minds are just able to process stuff. It also means that one of the walls that you might run into is Zadis might be using joy as a way of repressing everything else, which is very in keeping with human psychology. So um, the difficulty is going to be one, but it's going to require some momentum spins to get through Mm -hmm. the layers, basically. Okay. But he is letting you in. So. Okay. um, Just a quick clarification for me. Yeah. Narratively. I'm assisting how? Am I also going his hand. in? No, you're holding his hand. Okay. No. Okay. That's, <laughs> I was like, am that I, is what Zadis wants. Am, am I being try. taken on the. I'm, because I kind of want to really try. All, yeah, all I mean, all there was that a uh, few episodes ago. I've been working with the doctor yeah. trying to get that part of my mind opened again. I hear so. a lizard plant told you some very smart things. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I kind of would ask, I would like to ask him permission to assist it that way as well. You know what's his interesting? his mind might work the way my mind works, and I might be able to it's sit through it a possible. little better. It's mm-hmm. possible. Um, so, what were you going to say? It, you can also function as a guide. Yeah. So, if we okay. come across a wall, you can say, you you will feel emotionally more acutely mm. than I will. I'll mm. just be like, oh, I'm blocked there. But yeah. you would feel the, the blockage and maybe could help me navigate it in some way. Yes. That might be. So, here's what I'll do. Mm-hmm. I want to hold something. <laughs> um, I'm discreetly, uh, but uh, hopefully catching your eye, preparing like an emergency sedative. Sure. Just in case. Good call. Yes, please. Don't, yeah, yeah. don't walk out again. I feel pretty good. I think that's um, pretty safe across good, the board for <laughs> all three members involved. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, yeah. everyone gets a sedative. I'm actually in the room now. Yeah. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Okay. This is the uh, first time I'm in the room. So, uh, here's I'm going to roll. Both of the times yeah. I've I think that, I think that's brilliant. Yeah. I think that would be narratively fascinating to watch, mm-hmm. and I think, thematically and story-wise, this would be a perfect moment for Mala to find her way back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, here's what I'm going to rule it then. Um, I'll let you make the roll, and then, banked off of any momentum that you get from that, I'll ask for two, and with two momentum, I'll let you follow. Talon in. Oh okay. Um, and I'm going to say this is sort of a unique circumstance because of your bond with Zadis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And let me put this in more perspective for you. 
Your Betazoid probably could not do this with somebody else. So if you, so stepping in to to Zadis's mind is going to, re, it's going to be an eye-opening moment yeah. for Mala if you are able to, if if she is able to pull this off. But I'm going to ask for two momentum. And um, if you have, this would be a really good opportunity to tap into um, focus. Uh, if you've got your your values or anything, you can burn here. This would be, and this is totally exploratory. So. Mm-hmm. You could so, use in a year. I know. So if I hold, I know. So if I I know. hold Mala's hand, I can I go too? <laughs> I want to go. Um, <clears throat> Just kidding. I don't know, Sage. I, I, know. I, do feel like, I do feel like having you in the room should. It's comforting for sure. I, I just want to hold Mala's You know what? Hand. Because, okay. We'll make a chain. Everyone hold each yeah, other's hands. Yeah, I know. Hands. It's like a dance <laughs> chain. I, uh, Everyone's going in. Hold that thought, Sage, because I, okay. I really like that idea. So okay. let, let's hold that thought. But um, yeah, maybe. Maybe we could okay. do something. You wouldn't be able to go in, but no. you you could definitely. I, your presence is definitely helping, okay. for sure. You you and Zadis have a bond as well. Sam, and you know chapter talents. Um, it's at the end of character creation. Are yeah. <clears throat> Just want to make sure I covered everything. Uh, I think specific of mind melt will be in the Vulcan racial. It'll be yeah, be on the oh, Vulcan racial page. That's yeah. right. Yep. Um. So. This will be interesting. Agreed. Mm-hmm. One ten. Mm-hmm. One ten. Uh, Thank so you. Many values and focus. One ten. Huh? I thought I had so many values and focus. Um, one ten. Ever, but there's a directive at play. Okay. What's that? There's a directive at play. Yes. Oh yeah. Probably okay. Wrong. Boop, 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 we can boop, use boop. a value in that would create yeah. momentum. Mm-hmm. That'd be, mm-hmm. That would be like a. Set the crit. difficulty at one. Oh yeah yeah. So instead momentum. of instead of momentum, you could burn a value instead. Do we need to burn a value right now? Because no. I don't she, have one. To make this roll to get more momentum, because she doesn't know how deep she's gonna have to go. Yeah. Um, it, it could help, but you don't um, have to. I wanted to. I, I mean, I'm willing to right now. I well, she's gonna have to. Oh. You're. Oh, you have. It's to. gonna be on. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's uh, gonna cost you two automatically just to follow her in. Mm-hmm. Just FYI, the rest of it says this link goes both ways. And yes. it, it is tiring and potentially hazardous process for you. Oh, yeah. Complications can result in pain, disorientation, or lingering emotional or behavioral difficulties. Oh, there's get no that question. Get that sedative ready. Get those <laughs> I'm going to hold That's that. Sedative. I'm going to hold yep. Mala's hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, don't hold. No. Oh. I'm this worried is, about your hand. This is literally oh, right. my mind to now your my mind. Hand is broken. Yes, What's that? This is my mind to your mind. Yes. Your thoughts to my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. I really hard this not is... to absorb his cut truck because I right. can carry around the status in your head. This is a three way thing. So she'll be. You have I looked right to Sam because I was like, "Who's going to pick it?" Yep. <laughs> what, was um, it? what was that? Yeah, I want it. This is a three-way. So, oh, three um, cool. you're, you're not going to have to make a roll. You just uh, all, yeah, I'm yeah. Di- all I'm Stupid saying is, is I was just, just, just saying I have <laughs> values. If it helps or needs to happen, I it's, have them. My my condition to allow you to do this is you're going to have to follow Talon's lead on this. And That's fine. Yeah. By the way, you're, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. This is a very traumatic thing. This really is a three-way. You feel a lot of calm from me. I do feel healed and in control. So. Okay. Yeah. If that gives Let's you make I'm riding on the okay. high of the morning and this, and I'm. I'm we are down to three moments. You're fine. <laughs> and you have to spend, and you're gonna have to yep. spend two more to get Gina in there. Yep. So, so it really goes one. The yeah. Difficulty is one. I wanted to like try to get and some two this more. This is a science roll, so do you get cautious? Um, that's oh, it. Could get question. in. Yeah, that, I wanted to take it for cost 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 first. Oh, okay, it's got to be success yeah. first. So hold yeah. to wear it through momentum. Oh, what am I rolling? Um. Okay, you gently reach up and put your hands on the side of. Uh, Zadis' face, Zadis. and right before, right before you start making the connection, he just looks at you and he goes, "Did you see what they called the bar?" What was it? Did it's I win? Wasted space. It's a great name. Hmm. Okay. That you is owe a me ten dollars. A gold latinum. It's a nice fit. It's a nice bar. It's a nice bar. I just squeeze his hand. He squeezes it right back. You gently put your fingers to the sides of his temple, down the side of his face. And the anxiety you see, Zadis is just, and then he goes, oh. and you look into his eyes as your minds connect. Go ahead and make the roll. What am I rolling? Um, d- does it not say? It says difficulty one. No. Weirdly, just says task. Weirdly, just. Just says task. Yeah. Wow. Science? Lucky me. I just opened right to the page. Yeah, I feel like um, it means science melt. for sure. You're correct. It does not actually say physical contact with the task difficulty of one. Um, in that case, I'm going to say this is going to be an insight. <laughs> What a curious thing. I'm going to say this is going to be insight and 
Science. 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 Oh. Oh, science. Science. Oh. Security. I was going to say command, actually, but I think... No. What? Am I I'm practiced. I think science Keep in actually. Mind I'm practiced in this. What's that? I'm trained in this. Like. I th- well, yeah, but sen- but in this case, I think I'm gonna say I, I think I'm gonna say insight and science because um, because for example, your neck your nerve pinch also relies upon science. Right. I think oh, this yeah. is exactly. yeah. this is Vulcans being able to use their own physiology and, mm-hmm. and pa- mystical scientific. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So go ahead and your uh, make your roll. Uh, there you are. And I'm not rolling an assist, nope, right? Nope, cool. not this yet. Is, there's no assist yeah, yeah. on this. We got this. You can ride the wave, but you can't go in. It's difficulty is one. Beautiful. Yes. So pretty. Is it a triple? Five. Nice. Difficulty one, so we are maxed out at momentum. And then, so now we can take two. With now you have to spin two to get one extra. Spending two, right. squeezing hand. Wait, sorry, hand. five? One, two, Do you have three, four? I'm sorry, it's four. So four. Four successes. And focus. Uh, wait. I mean, there's three up there. And now there, we, we should. We, I think we're at minimum. Oh yeah, I did assume. Six. And then we spent. Well, no, two. actually, it still wouldn't get me anything. Yeah. So, now, so yeah. now we're at four so, momentum. Yes. Okay. Momentum. Okay. Two, okay. Three, four. We spent two yeah. for Chief Rent to join on the adventure. Yep. Okay. And yeah, everyone okay. can join. Did um, we already spend the two. Yep. Oh. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, how, so you spent the two momentum to get in. I did. Well. Okay. Um, the doors open. She's in. Yeah, <laughs> jacking Thank into you. the matrix. Thank mm-hmm. you. Right, um, yeah. Oh my god! So, so excited. So, the two of you are standing in a dark hallway. Cool. And you're hearing shouting. Oh no. Um. And then for there's a brief moment where you turn to see where the shouting is coming from, and you're standing on the main courtyard area on Earth, San Francisco, Starfleet Academy. Hmm. And there's a bunch of people walking by. And Zadis is standing next to you in his cadet uniform. Oh. And he's looking around going, day before graduation. <laughs> Why did we come here? Hi. Hi. Are you here or am I just imagining you here? I don't know. You look so young. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember who we are? Oh God, yes. Then but you I... know that we are in your memories. Yes. This Good. is this what it's like? <laughs> He's looking around. Um, it looks like his mind is whatever he doesn't remember. His mind is filling in the gaps. You hear birds chirping. Um, you see everyone, this was years and years and years ago. You see Boothby tending the gardens about 200 feet away. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Um, you you see, Starfleet he's just Academy looking around just like, beautiful. wow, I miss this place. <gasps> I should come back here more often. <laughs> but why did we come here? And how are you here? <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining. Yeah, I hope that's okay. It is okay, I just hope you know, we stick to our agendas. <clears throat> um, so, we need you to take us. Uh, <laughs> we need you to take us to. Fanfiction. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at my web browser, y'all. Fanfiction. Fanfiction. Do a triple X. How does this work? Like, can I feel them the same way that I mm-hmm. do outside? Yes. So, so we're all psychically, psionically oh, connected. Connected right inside of Zadis' <gasps> memory. We're choosing to be in his memory, even though it's an open door, kind of. For, for the two of you, we're linked inside of his memory right now, and for whatever reason, the connection of what you were looking for took you to Starfleet Academy. Mm-hmm. And he's looking yeah. around, going, "This isn't right. We, you needed the Malgog memory." It's yes. okay. Um, here, uh, I want to take his hands and, and and your hands and just uh, um, okay, maybe just um, think of something horrible. Fo- <laughs> Not something horrible, just um, a small detail. Think of a small detail that connects you to that place. N- n- nothing, nothing big, something very small. You're Maybe a on, sound. You're suddenly, all of you, and I say all of you because everyone is there. <gasps> you're inside a holding cell. Oh. Mm-hmm. And you're watching oh. Martinez oh. on the other side of the holding cell. Martinez is saying something. Yeah. You see Malgog on the other side. He's flanked by two of his lieutenants. And on the floor on his knees is Zadis. 
and you guys are watching this happen. Now, so Mala, the cadet. The cadet you've never this. seen this. No, I don't know what's happening. And for our audience yeah. at home, this is session zero. Oh my god, I don't want to watch this. You're watching, you watch Rue. Rue's expression is fury and helplessness. And Malgog, smug as ever, is holding a blaster, a, a phaser rifle to the back of Zadis's head. And Zadis is staring at this and he goes, I don't even remember what was said. And as he says that, you just watch Malgog shake his head and fire. And you see Zadis disintegrate. But Mala. It's not real. You catch it. It's not a disintegration. Your mind, you catch it. Yeah. That was a transporter trick. You've seen it before. And as you see it happen, you see everyone is completely fooled by this. Yeah. <clears throat> and then Malgog, inside, Martinez, anguish on his face, slamming his fist into the force field. And Rue goes dead quiet, just cold as ice, staring through the force field. The doctor, Throlo, everyone, particularly Lark, everyone is just anguished by what's yeah. happened as Malgog turns and walks out. It's just a trick. Where, where did you go next? Do you remember? Yes. And then the room kind of rotates around all of you like some kind of strange Hollywood camera trick. You guys aren't moving, but the room just and he looks to the left and you see he's alone in a, an empty room. Looks like a 10 by 10 cell, maybe like a cargo container. And he's still in his Starfleet uniform and he see him going, oh, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay, oh, okay, I'm okay. And then he goes over to the door and he's like, they beamed me into this room. Were you, how long were you here for? I don't know. They must have brought you food. Not for a while. What else is in the room? Any tech, anything that you can identify? When you when you ask him that, you realize there's this, Zadis is now in his Starfleet uniform and is the one in the room with you banging on the door. The Zadis that followed you in here is the now cadet. him. It's He's disorienting as sort of the mind is just turning. Oh. He turns and he looks at you and goes, no, it was an empty room. I opened this wall panel over here and he walks over and he pulls it out. <laughs> He's like, but nothing worked. But then I, I tried to contact the Sally Ride, and that's when, and he turns and looks at the door, and the door opens, and you see Malgog walk in. Mm. And Zadis looks at him, and the, you see a recreation of what happened going, and Zadis goes, well, I guess it's worth thanking you for not killing me? And Malgog says, the day only began just moments ago, really. Welcome to the crew. And then he turns and walks out. And then he runs over and he's like, he, Zadis runs over to the door and he puts his hands on it. He's like, I screamed and pounded on this door. He didn't come back for a long time. I was starving when he came back. They threw me scraps of food and all you all are in darkness suddenly. And you see just lights as the door opens as like chunks of rotted meat get thrown into the room. Mm and the door closes and you're all in darkness. You can just hear Zadis' voice going, yeah, this went on for a while. And he kept telling me over and over that you had all left me. It was psychological warfare. They yeah, I knew what he was up to, yeah. They prepare you for stuff like this in the academy. They, just in case the worst comes to pass, I knew what he was doing. And then months went by and he turns and the room rotates again. And you see now he's wearing these beat up clothes, the clothes you all found him in. And he's working on a hollow pad when um, a Cardassian approaches him, scarred up on his face and slaps the data pad out of his hand and says, I told you to do maintenance repairs if Malgog finds out you're not doing them. And he's like, I was running a diagnostic. I have to make sure this engine is, a, is, is, is horrible. I have to constantly, and the Cardassian decks him across the face. And then when Zadis goes to the ground, grabbing his mouth, the Cardassian doesn't stop. And now he's standing next to you all and he goes, this is how it went. They would just hit me for no reason. They hated that I was Starfleet. 
They hated that I was the best engineer on their ship. Damn right you are. Yeah. And then I got Malgog's trust. Tell it's, us. Tell us about Malgog. This Cardassian. His name was Sfer. Sfer. Uh, no. Sfer. Uh, Saver. Saver, I think. Saver. What did Saver look like? He, um. He always had those terrible scars on his face. Got them from other Cardassians, I think. Those Cardassians. Caught him trying to stage a mutiny. I think he was trying to contact the syndicate. I'm not sure. But I caught him. And then he looks up, and y'all are standing in front of Malgog, who's sitting back in front of this desk, and he says, He's talking to Zadis and just says, If this is true. You're going to be in good shape around here. If it's false, I'm going to feed you to someone. Don't know who, but I'll feed you to someone. Plenty of things on this ship that eat things like you. All right? And Zadis just says, Yeah, no, no, I, I, I know. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And Malgog leans forward and says, Of course you wouldn't. You're a bullion. You're Starfleet. You were born and raised without a spine. You do what I tell you. That's why you're going to live. And he gets on the mic, and then the, the words kind of blur, but you think you hear Zadis' voice coming out of Malgog saying, saying a name like Severn, Sever, Savar, and the Cardassian comes in, and the memory shuts down. You guys find yourself in the cargo bay, and Zadis goes, "He did things. I don't want to. I, I can't. I can't watch that again. He did things to him. I can't watch it. It's not important. It's okay." Wait. That was the first time I saw it. Wait. He has something. What was it? A device. Malgog had a device? The Borg. The Borg? We found the Borg. Where? When? There was a crash site. Whoa. Do you remember what else happened? There was a crash site. And he turns and he looks up, and you guys find yourself an environmental, well, outside of environment, you're surrounded by people in environmental suits, and you see uh, about 600 feet away the burning hulk of what looks like a Borg sphere, which has crashed onto the surface of the planet. <laughs> Huge plumes of green flames just bellowing out of the, infra the superstructure as it's beginning to collapse in on itself. Mm -hmm. And bodies everywhere, dead Borg littering the field. Um, most of them are being destroyed by the environment. But you see, um, on the inside of this wreckage, there's a few skate pods that look like, not escape pods, but they look like portions of the ship that have broken off that maybe have been enclosed room sections inside the ship that have probably broken away from the sphere itself. And you see Malgog and his men scouting and picking up tech and having conversations, and he goes, they found a crashed Borg vessel coming from one of the other quadrants. Where were they? They were inside and they found a they found an intact drone, and you suddenly are near the crash site where you see Malgog stepping over, going, he's shouting out and says, anything that looks like it's intact, I want it. Anything that looks like it's intact. And you see one Borg is kind of zzz, zzz, looking over. Malgog walks over with this smug look on his face and he slides a blade into its neck and pulls it back out and wipes it across his chest. And he's like, if you find one that's functional, Fully functional. I want it. And right when he says that, you hear Zadis go, Uh, I, I think I found one. Son of a... And Zadis goes, I found one. I told him about it. Why did I tell him about it? Was it a Klingon drone? What's it look like? It's a Klingon tactical drone. 
That's the one. Yeah. All right. Oh, it is the one. That's the one. You all walk over as you see Malagog standing over this tactical drone that has gone into stasis. It's mm. perfectly intact, but it's gone into a shutdown regenerative mode. And the environment does not seem to be destroying the biologics. And Zadis is just looking down at this thing, just going, I was trying to distract him because I found it. And he pulls out a device. What? And he holds it up. You see what looks like a liquid sphere. Does not look Borg at all. What the what? It does not look like any kind of tech you have ever seen. What is happening? <laughs> and it what seems to respond to Zadis. The surface begins to ripple and it begins to take a shape. Bizarre geometric shapes. And he's like, the Borg had this on their ship. I didn't know what it was. I was going to keep it. I didn't want him to see that I had it. But he found it anyway. And then it cut. You guys are inside the ship again. And Malgog is holding it. Zadis is on the floor, and his teeth have been broken. Mm -hmm. The sides of his mouth are just split. His eye is, is beaten to a pulp. It's swelling to the point where it looks like it's in danger of coming out of the socket. Mm. There's so much trauma on his face. Yeah. And he's just looking up at Malgog, and Malgog is holding this device going, it's like the other one we have. What? Other one? And Malgog turns and he walks out. And Zadis looks up at you, his face is normal again, and he said, Malgog had another one. This wasn't the first Borg site that Malgog had uncovered. The Borg were doing something in the Shackleton Expanse, but it, I, I don't know why. It was like scout vessels. I, I can't remember, but he already had one of those things. Where did he keep it? His quarters, and I saw it once. Can you take us there? You guys are inside Malgog's quarters now. You see Malgog is standing, looking out the window. And he's like, this is the moment where I saw it. And he glances over and you see a cubicle looking device that looks like it has a liquid surface, also taking strange geometric shapes before it forms back into a cube. And he's like, that's what it was. That. That's what it was. That was the thing that froze us in time. That was the thing that kept causing the chronotons to happen. That was the thing that we stumbled upon when we entered the nebula when we came across Malgog. That thing was causing it. He was testing it. And he... I can't remember. You're gonna need to spend momentum. How much, one? Two momentum. Okay. Two momentum spent. Right. Yeah. Keep talking, Zadis. He goes. It's okay. Keep. You. You can do this. You're doing so well. We're learning so much. Remember. He. Um. He found it. There's a. There's a. There's a system. It's in the Shackleton Expanse. It's covered by this gaseous cloud. It, it's uh, 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 the remnants of a supernova. It was. It was a white dwarf system. I don't remember. I don't remember what it. Where, where it is, but I know exactly what it looks like. What does it look like? Um. There's, there's only a single planet in the system. Um, it's a single white dwarf, and it's covered in this sort of purple cloud. Um, we went there once when we retrieved the second device from the Borg. He was using this, and I overheard him talking about... It, it's, it's some kind of device that links to computer systems, or, or it's supposed to... <sighs> It's supposed to, uh, to, um, the anchor. He called it the anchor. <laughs> the anchor. It's supposed to latch on to uh, points in space that have big energy signatures, like, like, like uh, stars. And, and it uses that to triangulate positions in space, the way you need, like, you know, points in order to chart a course. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to use it when we found him in the nebula found when when the Sally ride came across him in the nebula when we first encountered Malgog he was attempting to use it 
and it was causing the chronoton reversals. It was warping space-time. I, I don't know why, or, or what its purpose is, or how. But I, I, I heard him talking about it. I heard him. I heard him saying this. He doesn't know how to use it. He's but still when, trying to find out how. The second device apparently was the other half. So now it seems like he's able to activate it. I, I don't know. Everyone was scared of it. We didn't know how it worked. He tried using it a couple of times. And weird things happened when he did. Like what? And then he glances to his right, and you see you're on the bridge of Malgog's ship as he's standing up. Malgog stands up in his seat with a big smile on his face as you're watching a sun collide with another sun. Yikes. And he says, <sighs> Malgog says, move us to a safe distance, and then I'm going to try again. <sighs> and you watch as an artificial supernova begins to ex take places, get us out of here. Prepare the device again. I want to find out why it's not working the way I'm wanting it to. You, with me. And Zadis goes, I had no idea how to use it. I didn't know what it was. It was alien tech. No one's seen anything like it. And then you guys found me. You're standing on a platform. And Mala, you feel this rush of emotion. For all of you watching on the outside, both Mala and Talon have tears running down the sides of their face in perfect synchronous synchronicity as Zadis. The tears literally run down in a perfect yeah. time on the sides of their face as you are all flooded with someone who had given up hope, someone who had broken down and surrendered to their fate, suddenly being set free. As he's watching Martinez and everyone, the phaser fire. You see Zazra charging up onto the platform. You see Malgog getting out of there as quickly as possible. And you watch the recreation of Zadis falling apart into Sage's arms, into everybody as, like, as the whole rescue is happening again. And you feel it all over again. The rebirth of hope as Zadis is rescued, the crew of the Sally Ride reappearing and swooping in there. And then you guys are on Narendra Station in front of Mala and Zadis on the couch. And Mala oh. looks drunk. <laughs> and Zadis is staring at this and going, sorry. Where, what, wait, wait, wait. what is happening? Where are we? Um, what is this memory? And you start feeling it, Mala. Yeah. That same f sensation you felt that the first time, mm -hmm. except for now you're inside and it's everywhere. And he turns and looks at you and says, I'm sorry. No, 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 just, just let it play. Um, and you watch Talon as, and you are feeling it as well, um, as the two of them have this conversation on the couch <laughs> in the quiet uh, at Narendra Station, no one else around. And Mala is completely intoxicated. <laughs> and um, uh, Zadis is, 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 you're sensing, you're sensing concern for Mala. Uh, and then confusion, because he apparently, in this particular moment, as he's talking to Mala and they're having the conversation, you feel a surge of of an, a, a love that is so deep there really isn't a bottom. And, and the confusion that sets in immediately and it's almost comical the way it plays out, because you see Zadis' face 
as that feeling over, overcomes you, you see him reacting like, oh my god, and like yeah. having this. God, I'm such a mess. I leaned so close to you. Mala, Mala is completely oblivious as you're watching yourself. And he just goes, oh wow, this is like looking at my diary. Uh. <laughs> wow. Um, and then. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the memory just starts to sort of slow down and stop. And it looks like it's a moment where Mala is, her eyes are closed, and she's kind of looking off to the side. Hmm. And um, it, Is this when I fell asleep on his shoulder? It, yes. <laughs> and it looks like a moment that Zadis is kind of freeze-framed. And he just goes, oh my god, I can, I'm so sorry. This is really awkward on a level that I did not. I want to grab him and kiss him. Okay. Um, Just shut up already. <laughs> <laughs> so, outside. Yeah. Um, you're watching like, these tears, and then you're watching Mala and Zadis both a smile come to their faces. Uh-huh. And me too. Cause and okay, and Talon. <laughs> I feel that too. And then, yeah. gradually, your eyes they begin to open as you all step out of it. Are you all right? This is going to sound weird given the context, but I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ditto. And Zadis and Mala just kind of stare at each other for a long few moments. Okay. And Talon, while they're having this moment, it's like, you, it's probably like blah, 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 blah to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I turn to the to the rest of the senior officers and basically debrief them on what happened. Well, are you all right? <laughs> yes. Um, I, I'm fine, Captain. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Great work. Thank you. Shiv leans forward and he's like, I, 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 like I, I, I don't know. I was, I, I, I suppose I was supposed to ask on a, on a. This is just a really weird way to find out, and I is, but everything's cool. Everything that's good, right? Like what happened was good. I thought that was good. Uh, <laughs> kiss them again. I, I said shut up. Okay. <laughs> in the you, real world. <laughs> yeah. In real life. Yeah. yeah real. Okay. okay. Yeah. I said shut up. I meant it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> those two start kissing right in front of you. <laughs> And, and I light up and go, I knew it! <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> and then just compose myself. That, 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 yeah, <laughs> hearing that shocks me out of it. And I, so Mark is like, ha! Ah! So long as this is a known side effect. Um, no. This Jiv is, is just... <gasps> specific to us. At, at that particular moment, you do hear a chirping sound come over your comm badge and go, Jiv to Mala. Oh, oh. Mala's busy right now, she'll get back to you soon. <laughs> uh, d- <yep. laughs> Yes, Commander. <laughs> I look at Shiv and I go, I, I'm not Zid. I look at Zadis and go, I knew it. I knew it. He, he says, uh, interestingly enough, um, Bullions do blush. Mm. And he is now slightly purple in the cheeks. <sighs> um, so I'm glad everyone. All of this information being disseminated. Okay. <laughs> and some of you are even better than okay, it seems. Uh, yes, good. sir. I'm glad. I'm yes. glad. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Did it work? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it I'm asking specifically, did the thing we came here for work? Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Obtaining um, yeah. information. Yes. yes. We got so, Talon basically, so much uh, yeah. Talon spends so the next well few right. minutes basically but telling you everything major happened. Point. The next step, what, do we have so, schematics and layouts of Malcolm? Actually, Martinez. Shit, do we have, what do we have? Uh, here's what you have. As Talon starts to describe, Talon's like, Describing the the ma- this planet, this this yeah. white dwarf and stuff yeah. like that, and as she's sitting there describing this, and Zadis is nodding, going, "Yeah, it was a, it, it was a single white dwarf, single planet," and and Captain immediately, Viasu comes to your mind. Ooh. The word Viasu. As I Ooh. grab my broken pencil, <laughs> that's Viasu. Not only does that name come to your mind, Martinez, you know its exact coordinates. You know exactly where it is. You know that it's the name of the planet, and that the civilization that lived there died out billions of years ago. How do you, I know this? You don't know. You're the the, the sex one. The sex one. But it clicks immediately. V S. I say it out loud. 
via su via su via su and when one? he when he calls the thing the anchor you immediately know what that is yeah it is a triggering device that connects galaxies through a gateway you galaxies. don't know galaxies our galaxy to another galaxy to another galaxy it is a device that allows transportation. It warps space time and creates an artificial fold like a wormhole and literally folds space time and linking up this information flooding into your mind. It's almost like someone's hit a switch. Like this is becoming, this knowledge has been implanted in you somehow. And it's like a data packet that just opened up as you're hearing the description of the solar system. It's like he's tapped into a, a memory that you yourself has somehow repressed or that was inserted in there. It's been there. It's data that you didn't know you have and it just activates. All you know is that it's the anchor. This device that Malgog has is some kind of triggering event that connects galaxies and that the answers are on via Su. I know where it is. Captain? I don't know how I know, but I know. Do you see a bird? No. Oh. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> uh, I know where we have to go. How? Sir, <gasps> like I said, I don't know. But we I should know. follow. We should follow. Yeah. We're ready to follow, Kevin. This is so weird. <laughs> Tell Am me I the only it. one who wants a scientific explanation for no, this? And how weird not. is that? No, you're not. <laughs> Eventually, yes. But right now, we need to just follow, follow the intuition. Let's go get some answers, scientific answers. Mm. Zadis looks at you and says, I, w I wanna come. Uh, are you sure? Yeah. It, I'll need to ask the Admiral, but well, I was there when this started. I, yeah. I want to be there when it, when you guys do this. I'm sure we can tell okay. the Admiral that your intel is... Okay. You can come. Yeah. All right. That's where we have to stop tonight. No! <gasps> Mom sneaks in a quick... I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just go, and then I just lean over and go, I knew it. <laughs> the whole gang's back together again. All right. Yup. Wow. Yay! The band the is band back, together. back together. Wow. That was cool. <laughs> now let me just go talk to the Admiral and then we can get the fuck out of here. Let's yeah. go. You guys are, are getting really close. Oh my God. <gasps> really close. It feels like that, right? Yeah. It feels since like that. The since session zero, the seed's been planted wow. for this date with destiny. It's impressive. Um, so next week, nah. there's going to be a whole other story okay. that's been taking place. Ooh. And it's going to have to be Sam the one to tell you when, where, and how it's <laughs> happening, because Sam's the GM. So. He has nothing done, Sam. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we should, so we should next week will be our Lower Decks like, episode. What's we that? We should just like all be here and just like heckle yeah. from... <laughs> <laughs> Some of us will probably jump into chat. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> cool. The um, week after, I won't be here, so. Uh, you'll be yeah. here in spirit. So yeah. We'll in a couple weeks. Few um, weeks. God. Okay. That was intense. Thank you, by the way. Yeah. Damn it. You guys don't normally see this uh, when the show ends. We do, and maybe we, we do see it on Behind the Shield, but everybody, <laughs> round of applause to Eric. Yeah. Because that was phenomenal. We Jeez. always compliment him after we yeah, go dark, and so now you get to see a little bit of that. Great well, job, man. Thank you. He's great. great. He's supposed to be a psychic in an air game. So I so know. He's, He's so good. I've missed this since TVD <laughs> so hard. <laughs> I love yeah. a good brain drain. Psychic deep great. dive. Oh. Yes, make him the same color as his background. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got... I, I, we've succeeded. Thankfully, thankfully, it's now seven o'clock, so we've got to bail right now. So, um, so stay tuned. Behind the Shield is coming up. We'll embarrass him more. And uh, so if you got uh, catch you on Alpha, um, we're going to be doing an episode of Behind the Shield. And then after that, of course, we have Gather Your Party tonight. Um, uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, we will see you guys next Friday for a Lower Decks adventure. And until then, hailing frequencies are closed. I knew it. <laughs>